Three, two, one, go! We got a special treat for you here tonight. Game two here at Rancho Cucamonga. It is time for a banana ball home run derby. This is not your average home run derby. In fact, whichever team wins this home run derby gets to choose whether they will be the home or the away team. Each team will have a chance to go. They will have 90 seconds on the clock to hit as many home runs as they can. And there is an order to this. The first home run will be a self-hit ball over there behind second base. The next one will be a home run off the tee right at second base. The third home run will be a soft toss from right here behind the mound. And the remaining home runs will take place at home plate. Each team will have 90 seconds and the party animals will be going first. So ladies and gentlemen, your slugger representing the party animals, please welcome number one, Jake School. Biko Scala and Josh Tulevsky taking back over from Matt Gray for the young Professor Shark and the rest of the cast of characters that were entertaining you along the pregame show. It'll be a minute and a half for Scully here, going first in the home run derby. He has been dominant in this competition throughout the tour, but Dan Oberst, his opponent, has won the last two derbies. And we'll see if Jake can break the streak here in California. Only takes him four swings, no, five swings, to get through the self-toss off the tee and soft toss. Dustin Baber, his personal pitcher, man who has been proclaimed the best batting practice pitcher in Banana Land from either team. And now that Skull is at the dish, see what he can do. 50 seconds on the clock. We saw three home runs last night. Bryson Bloomer and Dalton Cornett, Skull's teammates. Blasted bombs. So far at the dish, Skull's only been able to put one out of Lone Mart Field. Yeah, and we haven't seen many home runs or extra base hits for the most part from Jake Skull in quite a while. He's just in a little bit of a slow skid. But what's really interesting about this home run derby when I look at it, I mean, this is a pretty cookie cutter standard ballpark. You've got the poles both at 330 feet, 401 at the center, and the corners, those left and right center gaps actually at the same dimensions as well. So really no advantage for a righty or a lefty in this ballpark. With 10 seconds on the clock, Skull puts three out of the park to finish with eight long balls, and that is a very good start. They're gonna round that thing up to nine. It wasn't his most powerful first 50 seconds or so from home plate, but boy, did he find the stroke there in the final 10. I mean, that's kind of what home run derbies are all about. Once you find that swing, it's really about getting as many off and staying in that kind of rhythm and groove. Now we're going to see how Dan handles this home run derby. And of course, he's going to be paired up with his head coach, Tyler Gillum. Well, and as you mentioned, Josh, this is the most fair home run derby we've had on the entire tour. This is as cookie cutter a park as you can get. 330 down both lines, 373 to each power alley, 401 feet to dead center. We've seen what Skull could do to the right side of the field. Dan, of course, will be trying to blast all of his out to the left side, although he did nearly have a home run down the right field line last night, missed it by inches. It was ruled a home run first time around, overturned by myself, Josh, Zach Frangelo, and Vincent Chapman. And as sweaty and terrifying of a decision as that was, thankfully, Zach Bro, our YouTube king, has vindicated us in our decision with some evidence that his shot from low home, golly, just barely foul on the would-be home run. 
So far, Dan only with long, one long ball here from the dish. That is going to be two. We saw Jake Skoll and Dakota McFadden put together incredible batting practice sessions yesterday here in Rancho. Dan's got the pop to put on a show as well. He's up to six home runs now. 20 seconds left. And Gillum hits him. See that happen a lot because in the home run derby, Dan's sweet spot is middle in here. He's trying to turn on these balls as he has put his seventh out of the park. Five, and I, five I think seconds. that's what you see a lot from both Skull and Dan Obers is they like that ball in on the hands. But Jake Skull gets back in the win column for the party animals and they're going to decide whether they want to be home or away. Let's send it down to the young professor. All right, Jake. What's it gonna be? The boys in black and pink have the choice to be the home or the away team. We want Rancho Cucamonga to take the party animals as their home team tonight. We're gonna be the home team. You heard it here. The party animals, the home team right here tonight in Rancho Cucamonga. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention down that first baseline. It's time to meet the cast of the 2023 Banana Ball. Woo! What's really fun about the party animals getting to be the home team is when Jake Skull just announced that, I saw a smattering of hands pointing up to the sky with the yes, yes, yes chant. Party animal kingdom is growing and it has spread to the West Coast. Jesse Cole and his cast and crew parading through the stands. Welcome up into the broadcast booth once again alongside Josh Talevsky. I am Biko Scala. So happy to have you spending your Saturday evening with us here in Banana Land, where last night, as we mentioned at the top of this pregame show, we had one of the best games on the tour thus far. I mean, just unbelievable. Right off the rip, you get two rounds of showdowns, and we might as well just get into the game action here. Come on it now. was Zach Phillips who took the ball for the Bananas, and early on, Mr. Phillips, he got the fielder's choice trick play there from Ryan. Cox, but as the inning continued, really didn't necessarily have it for the Bananas. Yeah, you see Coxie bobbling that one. It was an infield single all the way. Never had a chance to make that play, but this at bat with Tanner Thomas. Two pitches, three pitches rather, before the one you just saw there. Very close. Could have been called strike three. Phillips and Leroy were apoplectic. They didn't get the call, and it's barrel machine o'clock now for the party animals. Yeah, you see Chase Acup going to the opposite field for only the sixth time all season and picking up a run batted in. And how about this? Is Sam Clay Camp getting extra bases in three straight starts? You bet he is. <laughs> Clay Camp has been stroking the ball as of late. Joe Lytle's going to grab a two-bagger as well with a couple ribeyes to boot, shaking that mullet. Clay Camp coming in with that yes, yes, yes chant that we just mentioned. Jason Swan, the ninth and final man to swing it in the first. When all was said and done, a five to one win in the first inning. Now the party animals have a run already in the top of the second when Skull, a little aggressive, trying to read the timing of Zach Phillips. Would one run be enough? No. The inning was tied at one when DR Meadows goes the other way for the second time on the ball game, picks up the walk off. This one, uh, another pitcher and catcher who wanted a strike to be called. And instead it is going to be a walk off sprint with a beautiful choreographed dance to celebrate. And an inning later, same result. And same, well, not the same dance, but they're doing another choreographed dance as Jeremy Guthrie is going to take over on the mound. Yeah, Jeremy Guthrie, he got through the fourth inning for the Bananas, <laughs> but leading off the fifth, it's Bryson Bloomer to the trees. <laughs> no doubter off the bat of the Boomer as Guthrie in his sixth inning pitching for the Bananas finally gives up his first earned run. And here is the home run that would not be, as we had mentioned. Big celebration, we're all fired up for the five-year banana. We've seen him go over there a couple times, and then Frangelo and Chapman getting on the headsets, and this is the shot. Zach Bro, you can see it cross in front of the L in the old family RV foul pole. Vincent Chapman announced it's a foul ball and a pitch later. Yeah, that is a ground out to Chase Dacuff at short. Lealios would have a one, two, three inning, and then, stop me if you've seen this, a sprint to walk off an inning, Malachi Mitchell scoring the inning winning run once again. It is four to three as we get to the top of the ninth inning. Two outs, Dalton Cornette, are you kidding me? 
with their backs against the wall. He goes to the land of good and plenty. Will spin kick this thing into tiebreaker showdowns. Unbelievable. Number three, his third homer in July. And now you got Reese Hampton up starting off the first round. And he just can't get Reese Lightning when he goes to that left field, left field line. Yeah, he's so good in showdown. So fast. Great with his back control. Dan Oberst did not hit this as hard as he can. But the important part, that puppy rolled all the way to the warning track. He is going to get around for an inside the Parker and then Bloomer. You're going to get a bender. You'll get another. That is a sword, sir. And how about a third? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Huge K from Danny Hosley. And then at the dish, it's going to be Eric Jones Jr. taking care of the ball game. Yeah, it's EJ sending that one up the middle. And now the Bananas in their last two showdown rounds have come away with the win against the party animals. Eric Jones Jr., the hero in both games. You see Danny Hosley snaking the win out there with his two innings pitched and two rounds of showdowns. A great victory for the Nanners as they are now 22 and 22 against the party animals on the tour and could lead the season series for the first time since opening night on February 17th when they had a walk-off win in the ninth inning against the party animals in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Let's take a look at the statistics from the Nanners and the party animals from the beginning of June up until now because the Bananas have really turned a corner starting in the fifth month of the tour. I mean, you can just see on batting average alone, the Bananas batting above 300. The party animals have dropped off a little bit. And it's the Bananas also pitching a lot better. And we've seen that rotation really come in strong and the bullpen filling out nicely as well when you talk about some new additions. Ryan Kellogg, one to name. And look at the ball four sprint to strikeout ratio in particular. Yes, the Bananas have a little bit more of an uptick, but they are striking out batters at a higher rate than the party animals for sure. It has been a real turn of the tides for the boys in yellow on a tour that the party animals dominated through the first four months of this thing. Now, something we really need to keep an eye on tonight is the glove magician. Ryan Cox, shortstop for the bananas, is at 97 trick plays, so he will only need three for everybody keeping track at home to reach 100, and there is no one close to him. And it really does feel like Ryan Cox would have that opportunity to reach the 100 mark tonight, especially considering in last night's ball game a hat trick for Cox and yeah, he has almost doubled Dustin Baber there in second place with 52 trick plays for the party animals. Coxie will be hitting eighth for the Nanners tonight. Let's see how everyone else will line it up between the party animals and bananas. <laughs> Left in the outfield, hitting second at 306 and 378 batting average. Vinny DeRubius up into the three hole, holding down right field. Five for 12 here in July with two doubles. In the cleanup spot, it is Dan Oberst pacing the bananas with his 360 batting average. Hitting fifth and playing third base across the diamond from Dan. Eric Jones Jr., the tour leader with his 10 homers, team leader with 37 ribeyes. Dakota McFadden will DH and hit sixth tonight. He's hitting 297 with eight home runs, second best on the squad. Danny Hosley, the extra hitter, he'll get a half night off after such a beefy evening on the bump. Hitting 265, but a 295 on base percentage, thanks to a team high 20 sprints drawn. Here is Ryan Cox, the aforementioned glove magician. Also been swinging a bat very well as of late. Batting average up to 282. Bill Leroy, the catcher, will hit ninth, hitting 252, but a 352 on base percentage, thanks to an incredible 17 sprints compared to just nine strikeouts. And Dalton Malden, the songbird of our generation, has been swinging a great bat as of late and will round out the order. Jared Donaldson, the splitter specialist, gets the start here tonight against the party animals, coming off a really good one for Donnie. For the Animals, the home team this evening here in Rancho Cucamonga, Reese Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder, pacing the tour with his 393 batting average and 461 on base percentage. 
leading the party animals with his nine homers to boot. He is just an all-around superstar. Dalton Cornett, the catcher, as Josh mentioned, three homers here in July, none bigger than the one he had last night. In the three spot, it is Jake Skull, the right fielder. His four triples, 40 RBIs, tied for the tour lead. His 30 sprints, nobody is close to him in that department. Bryson Bloomer, the third baseman, will clean it up. You saw the homer hit last night against Jeremy Guthrie. He's hitting 345 before 19 on base percentage. Tanner Thomas, the left fielder, has been swinging an incredible bat lately. He's up to 291, tied for the tour lead in RBIs with 40, with Bloomer and Skull, the two guys ahead of him in the lineup. Garrett Delano, the extra hitter, will hit six tonight in a small sample size, hitting 423, a 483 OBP. He has done nothing but impressed with the bat in his hands. Chase Acuff, the shortstop, will be hitting seventh tonight, hitting 262, a 355 on base percentage. Joe Lytle, the DH, continues to swing a hot stick, hitting 303, a 369 OBP. Jason Swan, the first baseman, second best man on the tour in batting average with runners in scoring position, only behind his leadoff hitter, Reese Hampton. And Dustin Baber, the second baseman, will round out the order for the party animals. Their trick play king on the mound for the bad boys in Banana Land. It is Brett Helton, who has been excellent in his three starts. We'll throw it to the national anthem. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our good friends over at Zappos. The Savannah Bananas at 31 and 25, 22 and 22 against the bad boys of Banana Land, the party animals, have a chance to have a winning record against their arch rivals for the first time since opening night back on February 17th in West Palm Beach, Florida. Let's take a look at how the party animals will align defensively here in game two in the Golden State. From left to right in the outfield, Tanner Thomas, Reese Hampton, and Jake Skoll. In the infield, third to first, Bryson Bloomer, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Dalton Cornette gets the start behind the dish, and Brett Helton gets his fourth start on the tour on the bump. Yeah, it's Tanner Thomas and Jake Skoll trading spots in the outfield after it was Skoll in left and Thomas in right last night. And we saw three of the four party animals infielders with trick plays last night. That came from Bloomer, Acuff, and of course, Dustin at Baber. Jason Swan with the most trick plays on the tour for the party animals fielders without missing one. Let's take a look at Mr. Brett Helton on the bump. So 
Take a look at what he's done across 57 and a third innings. He is the Greek god of MPI in Banana Land, averaging three minutes and 17 seconds per inning thrown. And boy, has he been good in his three starts. What's more impressive, I mean, you talk about the three minutes, 17 second MPI. As a starter, it's even lower. It's three minutes and nine seconds. He's got a one and one record in 14 and a third innings pitched in his three starts and a 3.14 ERA. He has been phenomenal since moving into the rotation for the boys in black and pink. Let's take a look at the Bananas lineup trying to get some barrels against the Pittsburgh Pirates ninth round draft pick in 2015 who is currently boogieing to his delight on the bump. It is D.R. Meadows at the top as we just mentioned. Michael Deeb and Vinny Derubius do up here in the first inning. Danny Oberst clean, cleaning it up. Eric Jones Jr. hitting fifth. Dakota McFadden DHing behind him. And Danny Hosley, Ryan Cox, Bill Leroy, and Dalton Malden will round out the 10 that Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron have penciled in tonight. I mean, how fun is it to see the banana switch up this lineup? And here we go. We're sending it down to Jesse Cole. Everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Showtime indeed, Mr. Cole. The Nanners, six to five victors a night ago here in Lone Mark Field. Home of the single A affiliate for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. This is now three out of the four affiliate ballparks for the Dodgers that we have played banana ball in on the tour as DR Meadows not wasting any time. Two for four an evening ago. And he is aboard right off the bat. I mean, D.R. Meadows is in his 28th consecutive game batting leadoff for the Bananas. And in that time, he has batted near 400, a 373 batting average, 22 runs scored, and 22 stolen bases as well. So look out for D.R. Meadows on the base pass early in this ball game. The 2022 Coastal Plain League champion, a spark plug on the team that won back-to-back -back Pettit Cups. Is a board always very dangerous on the base pads. He swiped a bag yesterday. Michael Deeb in his third world tour. The former Chicago White Sox minor leaguer lines that one over the head of Chase Acuff. Awfully similar to what DR did before him. That one 99 miles per hour off the bat. And here's Jesse Cole. Well, Jesse Cole actually patiently waiting. Fans now Here he is. coming to bat. World Series champion, Josh Reddick! Spider-Man has made it from Queens across the United States to the West Coast. As Josh Reddick will play for the Savannah Bananas for the second time in what is already becoming a rather legendary career for the Savannah, Georgia native. I mean, not only did he sparkle with the glove, and this guy a gold glove winner in Major League Baseball, won one in 2012, but homered in his first bananas at bat and puts a charge into this ball. But it's Reese Hampton tracking that one down in the right center gap. DR Meadows will tag and move up to third base. The bananas in good position to strike early in this ball game. Good barrel there by Reddick. Nanners wasting no time against Helton, who is known to fill up the zone. Reddick, a 17th round draft pick for the Red Sox in 2006. As this one is going to be grabbed by Chase Acuff. The flip to second, not in time. Pinch runner Malachi Mitchell able to scamper the 90 feet in time. It's an infield single for Danny Oberst. He picks up his 29th RBI on the season. And four batters in. Nanners with a run on the board, still two men on and only one out for Eric Jones Jr. And this is huge for the Bananas. We saw them score early last night. But here as the visiting team, they like getting these extra at bats. For Jared Donaldson, who has not yet pitched as the visiting pitcher on tour this year, for him to get hopefully multiple runs of support early on in this ballgame is going to be huge as that one nearly caught by the fans but bobbled and off the tip of a glove. It was caught on the bobble, but it has to be a clean catch in Banana Land or else things get too tricky up in the stands. You never know if something clangs off a guardrail or the floor. I digress. I'm going to figure this things out. Okay, so this thing is flying at a meteorotic 
Meteoric. Oh no, I'll come back to that one in a second. Malachi Mitchell, a meteor flying from third, from second to third, will swipe his tour leading 54th base and only 56 tries. And that puts Malachi in double digits as well. 10 stolen bases now in the month of July. You like Meteoric, Josh? Meteoric rocks. Yeah, feels right to me. You EJ lines that one into left. Fourth hit of the inning for the Nanners. He extends his Bananas team leading 38th RBI. And still two men on here with only one away for Dakota McFadden. And that extends a six game hit streak for Eric Jones. Ever since moving more to the middle of this lineup, we have seen some great things from EJ. Started July before the North Carolina series, batting below 100, now batting at 318 on the month. Check swing from McFadden. It's a Chapman says he went around or calls it a strike. Either way, 0-2 on the third year banana. Oberst off of second, Jones Jr. off first. Danny Oberst always a threat to run. 31 steals and 35 tries as he will almost take off towards third. Thought better of it. McFadden battling at the dish. Works the count even at two and two. And fouled back. Brett Helton, a four pitch mix. Fastball in the low 90s. That's a cutter, changeup, and curveball to round out the arsenal. And continuing to try and time him up off second, darting towards third. D Mac fouls the ball off. Fans could make a play here. It is caught! Dakota McFadden fouls out to a fan. It's the first foul ball caught by a fan here in California. And we saw the fans leave their seats early in yesterday's game in anticipation of seeing a foul ball caught. But here, kind of a chorus of boos meant for that fan. They didn't want to see the bananas foul out to the fans. D-Mac is no stranger to fouling out to fans. Uh, who's been around for three tours, has seen a whole lot of it, has hit into a couple foul balls. Danny Hosley drives this one deep to left. And is it off the top of the wall or is it gone? It's a homer. Vincent Chapman took all day long to call it. No, we're going to call it a ground rule double. And now we're going to call it a home run. Confusion abounds, but in the end, Danny Hosley has his third ding-dong on the tour. Yeah, and the dimensions can be a little interesting, but as long as it hits above that yellow line in left field, even though you have the signs above it, it is a home run in this ballpark. And how about this? After the party, and it'll put up a five spot in the first inning last night. Now it's the Bananas doing it. We have a congregation of sorts going on between the umpires and both head coaches as you take a look at this again. And the key is, uh, yes, it's a home run. <laughs> Josh almost yanked his mic cord out. It was trapped under my foot. And he was so excited watching the replay. Now, Mike Vivasis is gonna fire off the challenge. And look at that. We're not even out of the top of the first inning. We have our first challenge of the night. I think this is a bad decision, but we'll get another couple looks. Josh, your challenge pack has been plundered by our coordinating producer, Chad Reese. Upon your first look, you think it's a home run? Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. We have Zach Frangelo and Vincent Chapman throwing the Riedel headsets on. And the control room back in Savannah will give us the angle of the homer once again. Chris Haynes, our high home cameraman today. And as you can see here, yeah, that's a home run. It's over the yellow line. Yes. Okay, Zach just wants to see it one more time, just to confirm it. And here we go. Ho 
home run. That's a home run. Correct. Confirmed. Good work, Zach and Vince. Okay, thank you so much, Zach. So it turns out I was right. The umpires had called it a double at first, which is really confusing. That doesn't make any sense, Zach. Zach said that the umpires called it a double, but why would the party animals be the one to challenge that <laughs> overturn turn it to a home run? We'll have to get it cleared up here who the challenge was from. The confetti was popped by the party animal side, and if they challenged that, they have lost their challenge for the game. If the bananas challenged it, then it was confirmed and they still have their challenge. Ryan Cox puts a charge in this deep to right center, but Jake Skull will track it down. And that is the end of the top of the first inning. But as Josh noted, a five spot for the party animals in the first. Last night, the Nanners get to be the away team and they put up five here in the top of the first in game two in California. We'll look for uh, we'll look for some guidance for the folks down on the field on what is the deal with the mysterious challenge. For now, we'll take a look at how the Bananas defense aligns here tonight from left to right in the outfield. Michael Deeb, D.R. Meadows twisting and turning, and Vinny DeRubius is actually already replaced by Josh Reddick out there. Eric Jones Jr. is at third. Ryan Cox at short. Dalton Malden at second. Danny Oberst at first. Bill Leroy handling the catching duties. Jared Donaldson on the bump. As fun as it is to have a gold glover in right field now for the Bananas in Josh Reddick. All eyes are on Ryan Cox tonight. Only three trick plays from getting 100, becoming the first player in World Tour history to reach that milestone. And let's take a gander at Jared Donaldson in his second year as a banana, first as a pro, 2022 Coastal Plain League champion. 87 innings pitched. Only Kyle Lewigs has thrown more than Donnie, averaging just a second below five minutes per frame tossed. And the ERA right at six. He has been awful consistent throughout the tour. Yeah, and in Jared Donaldson's last start versus the party animals, six innings pitched, four hits allowed, two earned runs, only one sprint given up, and six strikeouts. He earned two points, lost one point, and did end up with a no decision, but a three minute and 53 second average MPI. That was actually his lowest average MPI versus the party animals since May 19th, when he recorded a two minute and 43 average MPI in Las Vegas. Let's check out the party animals lineup that needs five runs to tie this inning, six to win it. Reese Hampton at the top, the switch hitting center fielder, Dalton Cornett, the catcher, and Jake Skull, the right fielder, all due to swing it. Bryson Bloomer at third base cleans it up. Tanner Thomas in left will have to come to the plate if the party animals have any aspirations of tying this frame. Garrett Delano in the sixth spot as the extra hitter. Chase Acuff at short. Joe Lytle DHing. Jason Swan at first. And Dustin Baber at second will round out the lineup. Well, for the party animals, you like that you've got a guy leading off batting above 500 against Jared Donaldson and Dalton Cornett, arguably the hottest hitter in the month of July. It's a good way for them to try and mount a rally here in the bottom of the first. As you mentioned. Oh, here we go. Jared. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank you. For the party animals, number six, Reese Hampton. I was wondering whose voice I heard out there from the field. It's Slam and Sammy Clay Camp. Third year member of the World Tour, second with the party animals. Player coach for the bad boys in Banana Land, giving Jared the shout out that he so deserved for grabbing one of the three outs the party animals needed to escape that five run first. East Hampton sprays that one foul and out of the stadium. No chance for a fan to make a play there on the Detroit Tigers 12th round draft pick back in 2018. Pacing the tour with his 393 batting average and 461 on base percentage. Peter misses a tad up. Three one now coming to a dangerous man. Nine homers 
Leads the party animals in long balls. He'll take his 23rd sprint of the tour, and he's gonna test the banana sprint defense. Reddit coming in, and the tag is not gonna matter for Michael Deeb as that ball ricochets out of his glove. But good job by Reddick. That was good sprint defense all around from the Nanners. Yeah, and you've got to credit DR Meadows especially being the next closest player to Josh Reddick out there in the outfield, having him start to crash in. And Reddick still looks as good as he did in his prime playing days. The Bananas with one of the best sprint defenses I've seen lately. That one's through the four hole. Dalton Cornett stays red hot. Reese Hampton gets the wave around. No chance for Reddick to throw him out, so he'll fire it into Dalton Malden. And a great start for the party animals. A sprint and a single. Still no outs. And they are a fifth of the way to tying this first inning. That one 95 miles per hour off the bat of DC3. Now Jake Skoll. The 15th overall draft pick in 2010. Texas Rangers nabbed him. Spent five years in their organization before two in the New York Yankees minor league system. Played four years of college football at the University of Georgia. And now in his third world tour, first two with the Bananas. Now he's gone to the dark side here in 2023. Coming off a two double game. Night one in Rancho. Has a nice backdoor slider from Jared Donaldson. You don't see him go to the breaking ball too often. Lives on the splitter. Throws it about 50% of the time. Works a four seam and two seam fastball in as well. That was the splitter at its best. An ugly swing from a former first round draft pick as Donnie gets the first out here in the bottom of the first. And you had the feeling with him getting ahead one and two in the count to Jake Skull. Donnie was going to go to his signature pitch. It's one where you can afford to give up a ball or maybe get a chase there from Jake Skull. But Donnie, excellent location with that splitter. Now Bryson Bloomer bounces it down the third baseline. What a pick by Eric Jones Jr. Unfortunately, Dalton Malden not able to return the favor. That is a tricky one on a scoring decision. Oh, <laughs> you're telling me right now. Get another look at it. It's either a single for Bryson Bloomer or it's an error on Eric Jones Jr. But boy, was that an incredible play to get that ball in the first place. Vico, I've got a quiz for you. Yes! What are we? We're hitter scorekeepers. There you go. Single for Bloomer. Following up a two-hit performance from last night, one of those leaving the ballpark. One gets the outside corner. Count one and two on Tanner Thomas, 2018 and 19 banana. In his second campaign with the party animals. Hitting 291. And digs that one out, able to spoil it. Fascinating decision here by the party animals. Looks like Justin Quinn, automatic runner tonight for them, has pinch run for Bryson Bloomer, who is 17 for 22 in steals, second most on the team. Tied with Tanner Thomas, who just went down swinging. And that was another good pitch on the outside part of the plate to a lefty. That's how he got Jake Skull to strike out swinging. And now he gets Tanner Thomas. And he will have to get through Garrett Delano, who early on facing Donnie, two for four against him. Well located fastball, the weapon of choice there. The strikeout number two for Donaldson. Peach Belt Conference Pitcher of the Year a spring ago. At Georgia Southwestern State. The pride of Albany, Georgia. Eyes up Garrett Delano. And is quickly ahead 0-2 on the Party Animals extra hitter, who is 11 for 26 with a home run and a double so far on this tour. 
And three straight pitches, three strikes. Donnie picks up three Ks in the first. Only allows one run to score, and it is deja vu. The away team on both nights here in Rancho Cucamonga has won the first inning five runs to one, and the Bananas will celebrate like they just won the entire tour. Tight splitter there from Donnie for his third K on the inning, and let's find out why DR Meadows was the showman of the night in our first ball game here in California. That is exactly right. It's DR Meadows earning his third showman award, and early on in this game, first inning, first at bat against Dylan Porter, he's gonna dunk one into the opposite field, and how about this? DR Meadows playing with a scratched cornea right now and getting the base knock and stealing first base here against Joe Lytle, trying to go behind the back. Doctor would come around and score in the first, and now in the second, going oppo again, and that is a walk-off single for the Bananas. Knots the game at one point apiece, and the Doctor, he's fired up doing a little dance, and for the boys, Dan Hobers coming over to give that guy a hug. He deserves it. And how about this? It's the former major leaguer, Jeremy Guthrie, getting into this game, and with two outs in the fifth, skied to DR. I think we've seen this one before. It's a back whip catch for the doctor. And boy, Jeremy Guthrie appreciated that one, gave him a tip of the cap. And the doctor, he would also come in with stilts on the mound, throw a pitch underneath him. A great game for DR Meadows. And once again, three showman awards for the doctor now. He was certainly in in Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> That's a fact, and he's back in business here. A funny note from DR Meadows was that he said he had both those hits to the opposite way because it's so tough for him to see with the, the scratch cornea. He can only get to the ball quick enough to send it the opposite way. As we are not too far from Universal Studios here in Los Angeles, looks like the Minions have joined us here at Lone Mart Field. Gonna Coach first base for the Nanners alongside Adam Viren here in the top of the second inning. Baba -ba Bully. <laughs> Good. Banana. Where's Nick Clarno when you need him? In the Braves minor league system. The best minion impersonation I've ever seen. This one backhanded by Bryson Bloomer. And he will retire his 2021 Coastal Plain League teammate. That was year three for Bill Leroy. This is now year six in Banana Land for the King of Dublin, Georgia. Dalton Molden will come up to the dish with the assistance of the Banana Band. And their second baseman, the 10 hitter tonight, means DR Meadows in the top is waiting on deck. And Dalton ahead 1 0. And his second tour with the Bananas started incredibly, was the showman of the night on opening night. The only time the Bananas have led the season series against the party animals, had a couple doubles, both of them were walk-offs, the second of which ended the game. This one popped out to Acuff at short. Then he fell into a slide for a while, but has been heating up as of late. A lot of good contact recently. We saw a 400 batting average in June for Dalton Malden, and he's batting 273 with runners in scoring position, but so far to start July, 0 for 7. Such is banana ball. Roller coaster ride of emotions and DR Meadows. It took him three innings yesterday to be two for two. Only two frames tonight, and he's got two base hits. And wouldn't you know this? In DR Meadows' last nine games, five of them have now been multi hit affairs. What a weapon at the top of the order. Brett Helton wise to keep a close eye on him. The doctor 31 for 37 in stolen base attempts, tied with Dan Oberst for the second most swipe bags on the tour. Both of them only trail Malachi Mitchell, the Bananas automatic runner. There goes the doctor, and Michael Deeb is two for two. Serves it out to left center. DR is gonna get a stop sign from Tyler Gillum as the throw from Reese Hampton comes into center. Second, rather, from center. 
And how about two men at the top of the order? Four trips to the dish, four hits between the Doctor and Vitamin D. And you really love to see the multi-hit game here for Michael Deeb early. The two-hole has not been especially kind to him, batting 167. Now he's seeing that average start to rise once again as he's getting more and more comfortable in this new batting order for the Bananas. Both hits, liners to the opposite field. Great signs for the pride of Davey, Florida. Now Josh Reddick gets his second crack at it. Good lumber his first time. Flew out deep to right center to Jake Skoll. This time Bryson Bloomer in foul territory will make the play to take care of the former major leaguer. Party Animals only need one run in the bottom of the second to tie this game at a point apiece. We'll hop into the broadcast booth where Jake Schwartz, our magical man in Banana Land, has a trick prepared for us. That's right, Biko. Now, here's what I need from you guys. I need you each to name a random three-digit number. Okay, so Josh, we'll start with you. A random three-digit number. 586, Jake. 586. Okay, Biko, same deal for you. A random three-digit number. 769. 769. Okay. Now, the reason I ask is because to do what you guys do requires a lot of knowledge of stats. And so I thought we would have some fun here and just make some up. And that's why these are not just any random three-digit numbers. These are actually batting averages and pretty good batting averages at that yes. that you guys have just made up here. Now, the second thing I want to call attention to is the connection between the two of you in the broadcast booth, okay? And so, Josh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my phone here and uh, hold this so the camera can see. Hold Hold it right there so they can see that lock screen right there. And Biko, I need you to hold your left hand up just like this. Perfect. Now, Biko, our first number is five. And so you'll notice if I hit a five on Biko's hand, it actually hits it on the iPhone. And weirdly, our next number is eight. If I hit an eight on Biko's hand, it hits it on the iPhone. And if I hit a six on Biko's hand, it hits it on the <laughs> iPhone. If I hit a seven on Biko's hand, it hits it on the iPhone. Let me take a look at this. We... <laughs> Oh, now, Biko, it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's a, little, it's a little delayed reaction. Now, Biko, we got two more. We have a six and a nine. Biko, whenever you're ready, will you hit a six on your hand? Of course, six. And it happens on the iPhone. Did it happen? Uh, it's going to happen. Oh, there yeah. it goes. There it goes. Trust there it goes. The process. Biko, last one. Now, if this was a true prediction, Biko, it would unlock the iPhone. So whenever nine. you're ready, I hit it. there ah. it is, Biko. It unlocks the iPhone, a predicted random made-up stack. Jake Schwartz, you continue to boggle my brain. You're incredible. Thank you, Biko. <laughs> incredible work. There goes the magic man in Banana Land. Absolute doozy. Once again, I don't get how he does it. Chase Acuff bounces this one off of Eric Jones Jr. That one is going to be an error from the Banana's third baseman. And the party animals have the potential inning winning run aboard. Joe Lytle is our Dunkin' Donut batter of the game. If he strikes out the full capacity crowd, all well, 5,000 plus here in Rancho Cucamonga will be blessed with free donuts they can get from Dunkin' tomorrow. And our chat, everybody watching on YouTube will get five gift memberships. This one tap, diving stop, Dan Oberst. He turns around and in time over at first. Donaldson able to step on the bag. Now we find out if the party animals still have their challenge and they do. They'll fire off confetti for the second time tonight. And we will see if Randy Voss made the right decision on this one. Dan wanted to get the lead runner, then realized he had to turn around and head to first. Lytle runs great. Oh, Zach's ready to rumble. Okay, let's take a look at the replay whenever we have a chance. Control room. Let's take a look at the replay whenever we have a chance. Control room. Here we go. 
Excellent play by Dan Oberst. Yes, that was, yep, frame by frame would be amazing here. Oh, oh no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think he might be safe. I think he steps on Lytle's cleat rather than the bag there. Because you see Donaldson step on Lytle's cleat here. Zach Frangelo says inconclusive. Well, the, the ruling on the field was out, Zach. Ruling on the field was out. I think he's safe. Okay, sounds good. I. What do you think, Josh? Okay, we're basically ran out of time and decided it was inconclusive. Okay, so as Zach Frangelo just had Shark tell the people here in Rancho Cucamonga, inconclusive evidence to overturn, I lean to safe. I think I also lean to safe, but it, it is a much safer call based on the nature of the play, even though we slowed it, or slowed it down frame by frame there, yes. to say that that play has to stand. Great work by the folks. Living three hours in the future on the other side of the country in Savannah. You're on an absolute heater early on tonight, control room. So slap a star next to that one in your scorebook at home. On the old 3-1 put out. Jason Swan now behind one and two. Banana in the summer series which was his debut in Banana Land this past August. He's gone to the dark side, a little excuse me swing, able to get a piece of it there to stay alive. And important to note that the party animals do not have a challenge for the rest of this ball game now. Yeah, and usually you try and see both of these teams lean away. Oh, Donaldson! Oh my gosh, he made an incredible play and then threw the ball into center field trying to double up Acuff. He will be content with one out. What an unbelievable play there. Jared Donaldson put that glove up in pure self-defense and made an unbelievable snag. And DR Meadows, great work being behind the second base back to be able to back up that throw and not allow Chase Acuff to move up to third base there. A classic case of a ball catching Donnie as much as he caught the ball. To the bottom of the order we go. Destin Baber, the second baseman in the 10 hole, lines this one to center. D.R. Meadows is under it, and Donaldson able to hold serve. A scoreless second inning means the Bananas preserve their one-point lead heading to the third. And it is time for Maceo Harrison and the boys to boogie. We'll be back in the booth with a very special guest after the player dance.
Beautiful job by Maceo and the boys. Bananas and party animals alike getting in on that one. And let's take a quick journey up to the broadcast booth because we have 14-year Major League Baseball veteran Brett Tomko joining us. Thank you so much, my man. I appreciate it. I'm glad I got to come up here. Yeah. You look great. good. You look good in yellow. I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I feel <laughs> it's pretty slimming. It's not white. So I, I look a little skinnier than I probably am. So I, I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, for those who may not have been watching at the end of April when Brett pitched for the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association against the Bananas, this is not a Banana Land debut for you, but this will be your first time pitching for the Savannah Bananas tonight. I know, I'm super nervous. Like, uh, I think with the MLB guys, we, I wasn't that nervous because we're all kind of old and like we're out of it. but. All these guys are phenomenal athletes, right. and it's a little intimidating. Like when you're walking, especially they're all got their shirts off and they're all jacked. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I may be out of place right now. Dan Obers blisters that to right center. Reese Hampton tracks it down, and will hold the Nanners first baseman to a single at 106 miles per hour off the bat. And Dan is two for two. Dude, he's raking. I mean, he's he's a phenomenal. He gave my kid a bat in Tampa, so I think that's my one son's favorite player. <laughs> That's what we love to hear. Dan is a St. Pete kid at a Largo, Florida. And I don't think you could have timed that any better, talking about the athleticism on display when you get a 106 mile an hour single. Dude, I'm telling you, the track man, listen, don't say my speeds on air. On air. <laughs> okay. So. It will be a secret between myself, Josh, and Brayson Wheeler, our track man specialist here. And Dan grabs his 32nd stolen base and 36 tries on the tour. Dude, that's some wheels right there. He's an incredibly gifted base runner. That's what three years with Tyler Gillum in the green light special base running system will do for you. This is now Dan's fifth year under the tutelage of Gillum. Oh. Eric Jones Jr. cranks that to left, and it's going to be one hop off the wall. Tanner Thomas will haul it in. An RBI double for the former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer. And the Nanners have a one-run lead here in the third. The Bananas are putting they're putting on a show right now. I love this. I mean, you're seeing them put a lot of good lumber on the ball here against Brett Helton. And a primary reason, Helton's a guy who loves to pound the strike zone. And really, the Bananas know that he's trying to throw strikes, and they are getting a hold of the fastballs here from Helton. I think that got me in trouble in Tampa. Like, the pace of the game and the speed of what you got to, like, think, it's hard to do. So I found myself throwing just pumping fastballs in there, and that's what these guys are looking for. So I have a little bit different strategy today. Okay, that's fascinating to hear. Dakota McFadden. I don't, off the first off. I don't know if I'll remember it when I'm out there, but I, in my mind for the last few weeks, I've had a strategy going on. D-Mac fouled out to a fan his first time. He was not happy about it either. Well, he will have a much happier trip back to the dugout after this one. That's a base knock, and he's pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell. D-Mac one for two on the night. Hey, so listen, so my, my kids were asking a lot, is there fireworks tonight? <laughs> because that that was one of their favorite parts was the fireworks um, commentary. Oh, really? Yeah, that was one of their favorite parts. Now they were at the ball game. They're at Tampa. the ball of the game, but they saw it on YouTube. I've had a ton of people tell me that was the best part of the game. <laughs> that warms the heart. Beautiful <laughs> throw down to second by Dalton Cornett as he nabs Malachi Mitchell. Flash the kid waiting to see if the bananas or a fan will challenge the ruling by Randy Voss. It does not look like that's going to come. And Flash, who had already stolen one base tonight. I can't imagine he gets thrown out that much. You're spot on. This was only the third time he's been caught stealing. And carry the one, 57 tries. Dang. And it snaps a multiple month long streak for Malachi Mitchell. In fact, the last time he was caught stealing on tour, March 18th in Sugarland, Texas. Dang. Day. That's a great gig. You just like come hang out, eat some spread, <laughs> and then you're like, hey, I'm just going to steal some bases. It's a great, great gig. Just happened to be the son of an Olympian sprinter, Malachi's dad, Dennis Mitchell, gold medalist for the United States, Danny Hosley. A three run homer his first time, sprays that one to right, driving in Eric Jones Jr. Two runs for the Nanners here in the bottom of the third. EJ now comes across to score his 21st run of the tour as Danny Hosley two for two. Listen, let me ask you a question. 
With the speed of the game, do you guys find yourself like exhausted by the end of the night? Since you have to like, you have to pick your pace up. Correct. It's an excellent question as Ryan Cox flies out to Hampton in center. Nanner shortstop 0 for 2. Usually I still feel pretty invigorated because it's such a sprint <laughs> and it's over within, you know, we're, we're on a half hour early for pregame show and but it's about a three hour job for us, right? Go down, hang out on the party plaza. I always feel great after banana bar games. Okay. I, I, house just, enough, I house enough coffee, it really doesn't do anything. <laughs> I just wonder, like, your phone calls, like, home to your parents are just, like, like 27 seconds. And you just talked about the whole game within 27 seconds. I think the, the problem is my parents get calls from me once a month if they're lucky, and we <laughs> chat for an hour or two, okay. try and wrap it all up. But, yeah, we're just trying to keep our heads above the water here in Banana Land. Good crowd tonight. Full capacity, the... 261st straight sold out bananas game. Is that right? Hey. Going back to 2016 when the team was invented. I'm telling you, that I'm still pulling them to come to Petco. I'm a San Diego boy, so I'm still pulling for Petco next year. Bill Leroy with a great piece of hitting. He serves that one into right. Danny Hosley is going station to station. Nader's catcher is now one for two on the night. I think it'd be really cool to see this in a big stadium with a third deck in it, which would be really cool. Well, I can promise you we could not agree more. Yep. And Petco is just about as cool a park as I think Major League Baseball has. If it's Petco, I'm coming up. I'm coming up to do the game with you. Well, it might be too old to, to get out there and pitch anymore, but I can talk. Yeah, you, you know all about pitching there. Three different stints with the Padres. Not a bad place to get to live and work, huh? No, it's not bad. The problem is, is when you work there and you play there, you find yourself in that off-season mode where it's like, oh, wait, I got to go to the ballpark? Yes. Like, you're, <laughs> you're doing yard work, and it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock. You're like, oh, I got to go. I got I to <laughs> pitch tonight. That was the biggest problem there. That's not a bad problem to have. Dalton Malden pops this towards the fans. It is not caught. Nanner's second baseman popped out his first time. I feel bad of the first guy that caught that ball. He got some – that was rough from the crowd. They were, they were brewing pretty hard right there. This one is squibbed foul. What was even more impressive last night was every foul ball the party animals popped and was not caught, an absolute raining of booze. Oh, that's great. I'm going to tell my kids, don't catch a banana foul ball because I don't want to have to, like, <laughs> try to protect you as they bring you on the field. Mighty hack and a foul ball by Dalton Malden, uncatchable by the fans. Hosley off second, Leroy off first. Another one-two coming from Helton. Pounding the zone as per usual. And that one fouled off. Look out, Emerson Elmgren, the iron horse of BTV, just barely getting out of the way on our third base camera there. I would gotta say the pace of this game is a little bit slower than usual, right? It certainly is. And as was last night, double steal from the Nanners, and they are going to do it standing up. No throw for DC3. That one was on Helton. Former Pittsburgh Pirates minor leaguer, four years in the Pirates system. This is now his ninth year as a pro. Fires oh. the 2-2. It's back up the middle. Hosley scores easily. Bill Leroy is on his tail. Hampton with a worm burner of a throw in time. Oh, there may be a challenge there. We'll see if we get the challenge for now. Three-run score in the inning. Yep. And the challenge coming from the fans, our third challenge in just two and a half games, two and a half innings of banana ball tonight. Jeez. That certainly hurts the pace. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's slowing down the pace for sure. Okay, we will see if Dalton Cornett got the tag on Bill. Or more so, we have to see if Bill avoided the tag. Zach Frangelo and Randy Voss are ready. Vincent Chapman chatting with the fans, wondering why they would ever question his decision. <laughs> okay, control room, what do we got on the replay here? Vincent praying that his call stands. We can't tell there. Can't tell there. Okay, from the first base camera, there goes Hosley. Uh, Ooh, I inconclusive. Don't know. Okay, we're going slow. Ooh, I think he's safe. Uh, Brett Tomko thinks he's safe. He either got him 
He either got him on the tookus or he didn't get him at all, but I can't tell. Yeah, but does Bill touch the plate? Does Bill touch the plate, Josh wonders? He does, it yes. looks like. High home was inconclusive for us. Yep. Inconclusive, I agree. It's one of those where he looks safe on the replay, but can you prove it? You can't. You can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and check out the celebration coming from Vincent Chapman here. <laughs> right up into the kitchen of those fans. We have a kiss off here between frames and, and well, we see three different couples smooch. I would love to go back in time, Brett, to the end of <laughs> April when you experienced Banana Ball for the first time and, and you tease that you may have picked some stuff up that you're gonna bring to your outing here today. Is there anything that you can tell the people? I'm, I was trying. I was throwing bullpens the last couple weeks and I was trying to like do something where I would stop when I landed and then pause for a second. It's really hard to do. Like, I mean, my arm didn't feel good doing it, so, but I might try it. I might try it depending if it's a situation. It's really hard to do. Like, I give these guys credit to have these trick pitches <laughs> because I think for the last 30, 40 years, we pitch the same way every right. time. So to like completely change it is just bizarre to me. So I might try it. My kids were asking me, Dad, you got anything? I'm like, I don't know. I might bring out something though that uh, a friend of mine used to wear a little bit. So okay. when, when I come out, so I would think everybody will recognize it when I when I walk out of the dugout. So <laughs> I think I got the approval. I, we text back and forth a little bit before the game. So I mean, one of the key things we talked about in Banana Land minutes per inning, how quickly it takes you to get through an inning. And we've talked to so many different pitchers on our team and the guests who have come in and pitched for us. What do you think is kind of the secret to recording a low MPI in Banana Ball? It's hard because I came into Tampa, I'm like, I'm going to be on the leaderboard. I'm doing it. And it, I mean, it's pounding the strike zone, but these guys, as you saw with Helton, these guys are ready to hit. So you, you walk this fine line of like, do I pound the strike zone or you got to live on a corner or mix in a little cutter? I mean, because you're trying to you're trying to go after guys, but on, this, on that hand, those guys are ready for it. So those innings, you just got to, you got to paint. You got to make good pitches and try not to have a, a ball barreled. But I would love to be on the leaderboard. Your buddy Jeremy Guthrie. I know, I know. A minute and 27 seconds. He got knocked off, though. Correct. So, I mean, that would be the goal, I think, maybe to beat him. Maybe not get on the leaderboard. <laughs> Reese Hampton, leadoff hitter for the Party Animals in the ball game, and here in the bottom of the third inning. And a two-base sprint came around to score. Jared Donaldson out for his third inning of work. Jeremy Guthrie now sits at 12th all time with his minute and 27 wow. second inning I, man i don't know i'll see we'll see tied with tonight's starting pitcher brett helton for the party animals hampton that's trouble that is deep out to left center field oh. michael vitamin deep a stumbling catch on the warning track he's done that a handful of times here in our first two games in california boy the left field gap has not been kind to michael deep so <laughs> far in this door but he's navigated it successfully every time and here just when you think he's not going to track it down he comes up with a great catch and dr meadows there to hype up his buddy i mean the hat's aerodynamic so <laughs> i mean definitely help to the speed of the ball right there for sure Looks like he's ready to paint a beautiful landscape of the San Gabriel Mountains here. <laughs> hey, I was an art major. I can make that happen. I know. I know. You've yeah, I can make that happen. If I had a little easel <laughs> on the dugout right there, I could I could bust something out, maybe. All right, that might have to be round three in Banana yeah. Land for Tomko. <laughs> Donnie will bring in Malden, Cox, and Meadows Ooh. to dance, and Dalton Cornette is not going to give him a break. He's now two for two, couple singles to right field. First one drove in a run. This time he's aboard with one out for Jake Skull, who is Donnie's first of three strikeout victims of the night thus far. Listen, this guy's a beast. Skull? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's a beast. I saw him in the clubhouse, and I was like, dude, this guy is a monster. I mean, there's some monsters. There's monsters all over, but this guy, man. Well, I ran through the resume his first time up. 
but it bears repeating, at least briefly. There's not many people who can play seven years of minor league baseball, drafted in the first round back in 2010, and then four years of SEC football at Georgia, and now he's back into professional baseball. A couple years in the Atlantic League, and now he is a full-time banana baller. But that just goes to show you, like, these guys are phenomenal athletes. Just like we were talking about earlier, they're good athletes, not just good baseball players, they're phenomenal athletes. And Michael, you shouldn't let some of us on the field with that. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and Michael Deeb, who just tracked that ball down in the left center field gap, started his collegiate career with four years of football at Notre Dame. Dang. And got I, back I underachieved. I underachieved big time in college, I guess. <laughs> Two one coming here to Skull. Good pitch. Yes, misses the inside. I was corner. a high school. I was a high school basketball player. That's all I wanted to do was play high or college basketball. I had scholarships that offers out of high school. No baseball offers whatsoever. Wasn't even on anybody's like map. Didn't get a phone call. But I was six three. Wasn't super quick. So the writing was kind of on the wall. So started pitching. And that worked out pretty well for you. That is going to be another oh, strikeout of school. Coxie goes between his legs to tag out Cornette. Strike him out, throw him out. Bill Leroy with the laser beam down to second. And the Bananas lead two points to nothing as they win the inning three runs to zip. We got a dance here? Yeah, we'll see how they will celebrate. No, they're going to uh, can the said, celebration. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, this has been an absolute blast of an inning in the booth with you, Brent. We keep you all it night. went by too fast. But, well, that is banana ball, is it yeah. not? Uh, we want you to be prepared here for your bananas debut yeah, coming in a couple innings. Yeah, I'm like sixth, seventh, eighth inning from what I heard, out, out in that range. So I got a while to kind of relax. I love so it. It'll be good. I love it. So how how are you going to be prepping the rest of the ball game for your appearance? I'm going to pray tonight? a little bit yes. um, to the baseball gods to let me get through it. Um, I get super nervous before I pitch. My whole career, I got nervous all the time. Like, I'm sure I'll pee about five or six times before <laughs> before I get out there. But yeah, no, I get super nervous. I don't think there's a game that I ever pitched in my entire career that I wasn't super nervous for. If anything, just go talk to Reginald Horton before you get out there. He'll be sure to hold you accountable. He might give you a cup of Reginate as well. It'll be good for the hydration. <laughs> I need it. It's so hot out here. I'm dying. But I'll be ready. I'll be ready. I'm getting. I'm getting there. So. Uh I love it. And it's going to be the three-pitch mix, you think? It's going to have to be. Fastball, cutter, curveball. So my changeup's horrible. By it was horrible <laughs> 10 years ago. It's, I'm sure it's horrible today. Yeah, so you've given it away here in, in year 50. Uh, we've got a highlight. Oh, oh yeah, yes. there it you is. got Ryan Cox to fly out. Right. And that's all we're going to show. To a barefoot left fielder. Correct. Yeah, no, it's perfect. <laughs> well, I mean, not to call anybody out, but Heath, Heath Bell, man, the first the first pitch of my inning dropped a routine fly ball to short. That, that threw my whole inning off. <laughs> Correct. You should have heard my kid on a video was like, what's he doing? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then that pop up right there. He's like, yeah, th it's about time. He was like really mad. So he'll be, he'll be stressed out more than me, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's good. I'm excited to be here. It's fun. That is a riot. So the kids are a little more nervous here for, for your second banana ball experience than I you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> I know my wife's nervous. My wife always gets nervous when I pitch, and especially now I'm 50 years old. So it's not like I'm a spring chicken, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think we're all nervous. But once once I cross that line, I'm, I'm good to go. Yeah. I love it. We have all the confidence in the world for you. <laughs> top of the bananas line up here in the top of the fourth. Ooh, Sidewinder. Yeah, Drew Gillespie is taking over for Brett Helton. 1-1 one, one count on DR, two for two. A couple singles, as well as a run scored. And that one all the way to the backstop. Meadows is gonna try and steal first. And he's successful. Three for three on the tour in his attempts. I like that rule right there. I dig that rule. Make the pitcher pay for, for not throwing strikes. And another look at it here. Gillespie yanked the bender down and away. And all of a sudden, leadoff man on. Listen, I don't want to jinx myself, but in Tampa, I got out to three balls. And I was like, do not walk this person. <laughs> I don't want to see it. So I might have jinxed myself right there, but that was the one thing I did not want to have happen. I should, gosh, I shouldn't have said that, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> We're good. Just knock on wood. This one backhanded by Acuff. Baber with a jump throw over to first. Not in time for a double play. 
101 miles per hour off the bat of Michael D. Tough way to finally not get a hit. He's two for three on the night. There's some booing going on. Not sure what the boos are for. I don't know, I don't know if there are some Dodgers fans. I was just going to say that. Not I was just going to say that. Yeah, with I wasn't going to be the first one to bring that out. <laughs> 2017 all over again. <laughs> there was, there, I, I can't say there wasn't a party animal looking for a trash can. Right. To, to taunt. <laughs> One one count on Reddick. It's flown out to right and popped out in foul territory to third. Malachi Mitchell pinch running for Michael Deep. It's his third time on the base pads. I thought he got it that first at bat, that first pitch. I thought it was in. I mean, it was in the gap. I thought it was extra bases off yeah. the bat. Malachi will swipe second. And he is now two for three in stolen base attempts. Not even four innings into this ball game. I mean, for the ex big leaguers to come out here and hit cold turkey when they haven't really seen, you know, 90, 92, is, it's a really tough thing to do. And that is going to be a K for Drew Gillespie. Great memory for the reliever for the party animals. And what's more is, I mean, your teammate for that MLB PAA game in Tampa, Nick Swisher, uh, started off that ball game, only looked at one pitch before taking Kyle Lewis to the opposite field for a double. Nick Swisher's the best. He's the best. But it's incredible that those guys, they asked me, they're like, hey, do you want to get up and have an at-bat? And I said, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> no chance do I want to get in that box. Danny Oberst is two for two. Make it two for three. That one, 100 in miles an hour, 100 miles an hour off the bat. But a line out as Gillespie gives up some hard contact. But with the strikeout, line out, and ground out, escapes the frame unharmed. And the party animals just need one run here in the bottom of the fourth to cut the Bananas 2-0 lead in the all-important points category in half. It is Hey Baby time here in Lone Mart Field. Have you figured out the Hey Baby? I did. I, I, I killed the Hey Baby out, out <laughs> in the parade. I killed it. I got to say, the leg kick one was tough. Like, you got to have some rhythm and, and, and do it right. I messed up a little bit. But the Hey Baby, I, I, I dominated it. I was about feeling pretty good about it. One of the greatest things I've seen in my entire life was at that MLB PAA game in the batting cages before it happened. <laughs> You and all your former Major League teammates with Lou Pinella in attendance all learning the Hey Baby dance and the kick line. It was, it was like a fever dream for me. Listen, this, <laughs> like, for us to get to do this when, like, what we did for our profession was so serious. Like, we had fun, but your, your job is on the line, and it's like, you got to come out and perform. So, so, like, the fun aspect, sometimes you get lost in it. For us to come out here and just kind of let loose and dance around and kind of be clowns and, and like, like shed that like professionalism is is a lot of fun for us to do. And we I don't do it, it quite as well as these guys, but it's fun for us. I think it also leads to a deeper fan inter interaction as well. You know, they don't just see you as baseball players, they see you as people, you know? Well, and that's the funny thing is like, all these major league baseball players around the world that, that, that come in, all, every country, like if you, if you could spend a day in the locker room, you'd realize it's the same. It's the same as this locker room. It's the same as a college locker room. We're just a bunch of guys, you know, either straight out of college or high school and have families and doing the same stuff that everyone else does. We just got to go on in, in a big stadium and try to perform. But, you know, this is a little bit where you get to kind of just let it loose and let your guard down a little bit. And if you make a fool of yourself and act a little stupid, so what? It's great. It's fun. Now, we teased earlier that you are an incredible artist, Brett, and now you get a great look. Oh, at those see, look at that. Mountains. I mean, you could do a doozy with this, huh? Listen to that. I, I mean, I grew up in Orange County, so I've, I've grew up looking at these mountains. So, yeah, that's a pretty good picture right there. How blessed do you feel that your parents moved you out of Ohio uh, into uh, Southern California when you were three? Every time I went through Cleveland, I was like, thank you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Not not to back up Cleveland. Cleveland, great people. Like, we went, I, went, I took my mom back there for her 80th birthday um, last year, and it was great. But 
I mean, it's hard to beat Southern California. I mean, I grew up in Orange County. I live in San Diego. It's hard to beat it out here. I mean, it's it's a little sticky here right now. We, we're not used to this weather. Well, that's the thing here is as this foul ball is not caught, we are only jokingly ragging on Ohio. It's an amazing state. We had a blast in Akron about a month ago. It's just how powerful this part of the world oh, is. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I was I came up with Cincinnati, so I have, I have a little bit of an allegiance to Cincinnati. And there's a big rivalry between Cincinnati and Cleveland, so I can't I can't support Cleveland <laughs> so much. But I had a fun fact that Jesse brought it up. I don't know if he's going to use it in the announce it, but my dad named the Cleveland Cavaliers. I wanted to ask you about yeah. that. So he won a contest when he was 28, and he got to name the team. It was he wrote what it should be and why, and he got picked, and he drew the original Cavaliers logo. <laughs> so, like, our ties to Cleveland, like, as much as I rag on it, it's like, you know, I'm a closet Cavs fan, especially when <laughs> LeBron was there. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's home. It's where it's where my parents, you know, born and raised and I was born there. So I, I can't rag on it too much. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little, just a little bit. It's just an easy target. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not hard. It's four, five, six here for the party animals in the bottom in the in the bottom of the fourth. But it's growing. It's growing. It's a good city right now. They're they're growing. They're changing stuff. It's been. Like I said, when we went there last year, it was a lot of fun. Last summer, it was a lot of fun. I've heard amazing things. And the Rock and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is on the to-do list. I've done it. I never did it going in. I finally, the last time I went to Cleveland, I did it because I was like, I got to say that I went to the Hall of Fame. Right. Because you're there, and there's not there's not a ton of stuff otherwise to do. How about this? We slept in the uh, Christmas Story House. You can. VRBO it for a night, and uh, we stayed in w in the original house for one night. How about that? And how about Bryson Bloomer stealing first base? I have been waiting for this day forever because there are a plethora of party animals and bananas alike that had been tied for the World Tour lead and steals a first. All of them with three. Bryson Bloomer now stands atop the mountain with four. That goes with his tour lead of seven hit by pitches and 40 runs batted in. Now Tanner Thomas to strike out his first time. I'm sure you got to face a handful of those guys who just happen to be ball magnets. Is there something to facing somebody who just is hit by pitches more than anybody else? Well, it's those guys that are right on the ditch yeah. and they leave that elbow. I mean, Bonds was like that guy. He wore like a stinking armor on his <laughs> left or his right elbow yeah. and hung it out over the plate so like <laughs> some of those guys you just get and some of those guys you just want to get just because like you see him hanging over the plate and you're like all right if you want to get hit i'm gonna hit you like <laughs> there's been a few times that happened where it's you want it out there all right i'm gonna i'm gonna wear your elbow out you know some people think craig biggio got in the hall of fame for 3,000 hits but you know it's the hit by pitches that really swayed the voters that guy was right that was another guy that was right on the dish you you're exactly right so man it's it's tough pitching's tough hitting's tough it's all really tough but i'll tell you what if i was a hitter i would have that elbow thing on why oh would gosh. why wouldn't you i don't I, my kid wears one i make him wear one i'm like dude why not that way if it runs in there a little bit you're not scared of it I am always right on top of that plate. That's how my career ended. I got hit in the hand and shattered my hand. Yes. Yeah, that was it. That oh was the last gosh. game. First time I'd ever been hit by a baseball plane. Oh, how about that Baltimore chop over the leap of Dan Oberst? And it is going to be one of the more bizarre doubles you'll ever see. Tanner up to second base and okay. the potential inning winning run now 90 feet away at third. That was 66 miles an hour off the bat. And that is baseball and banana ball to a tee right there. Just goes to show you don't always have to hit it hard. Correct. Just hit it in the right spot. We saw a 101 mile an hour ground out and a 100 mile an hour line out just in the top of this inning. Sometimes 66 miles an hour will get you your seventh double of the That's tour. Right. That's right. Bananas have to bring the infield in and that is a dangerous prospect with the powerful Garrett Delano in the box. Delano's the smartest guy here. He's wearing shorts. <laughs> By far the smartest guy. I believe his lower third graphic references them as well. Bananas bringing five infielders. Eric Jones Jr. will take care of this. And that is a huge out number one. 
Some boots are made for walking. Delano's shorts are made for batting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful mind you've got, Josh. Chase Acuff reached on an error by EJ his first time. Nanner still with five infielders. Center is vacated. DR Meadows playing a short field type position. And with Jared Donaldson, a splitter specialist, it's a defense you could feel, feel pretty content in for the, for the Bananas. I mean, when you don't have a run in the top half of the inning and you can bring in your center fielder who played primarily infield in college, what? it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and there you go. Chase Except. Acuff with the liner. And that's a walk up for the party animals. They get on the board in this ball game. They cut the lead in half. It's two points to one now. Listen, it makes sense if that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, if, if you didn't have D.R. Meadows position right there to try and have Grace and Bloomer coming home on what would have been a sack fly attempt. Instead, the party animals are gyrated and pumping those arms at the dish. They have cut the Nanners' lead in half. It is two to one bananas going into the fifth inning in the all important points category. And it looks like we have a brand new promotion. Let's throw it down to Jesse Cole for the feeding daddy race. And then we'll be back with Brett Tomko. We got two three-year-olds, Rain and Ashton, to see who can pop, who can feed their dad the most in the shortest amount of time. Rain and Ashton, are you guys ready? On your mark, get set, go. Here we go. Oh, wait. They're just running straight to dad. All right, wait. Oh, they're going the pies first. Oh, he goes the pie. Rain, get some more food. All right, we're tied here. This is going exactly how we anticipated it. Oh, wait, there goes Ashton with the banana. Right in his face. Banana. Rain, go get some more food. What's he going for? Oh, he's going for Ashton's popcorn. Here we go. What's going to happen here? All right. This is getting really gross and disturbing all at once. Here we go. So we've got pie and nachos over here. Ashton's running full speed. What is Rain gonna grab? They're going for the chili cheese dogs. Here we go. Look at this excitement in Rain's face. All right, he goes in right there. The popcorn is down. We've got five seconds left. Only got the nachos on this side left. Wait, he's going for the popcorn. He's going for the popcorn. And the winner right here, the feast for daddy. Let's hear it for three-year-old Ashton. Well, that one is a winner in my books. Uh, Brett Tomko, before we bid you adieu, because I know you got to prepare for your outing coming up in a couple innings here. Uh, what was going through your mind when you are traded for the first time in your Major League Baseball career and it's for Ken Griffey Jr.? I, I was told a week before that that I was definitely not in that trade. So it, <laughs> it took me by surprise when it happened. And I was super hurt at the beginning because you feel like I'm going to be a Cincinnati Red forever. Right. But it was it was tough. But then once you get to Seattle and Seattle's a great team, it was it made it a little bit easier. But I mean, I get to say I was I mean, traded for one of the best players of all time. And not, you, not straight up, not correct. straight up, but you know, a couple other guys. Yeah, yeah, me and Mike Cameron and a couple other guys, but it, it's still a pretty cool thing to have on your resume. How about this? Eric Jones Jr. fouls out to a fan, and both the outs made by fans here in California so far on the tour have been against the Bananas. And now it's going to be one of your former Major League brethren, George Kataris, get a little pinch hit opportunity here. EJ two for three because of the foul out. Katara is pinch hitting for D-Mac who is one for two. You and George overlapped for three or four years in your Major League Baseball careers. Yeah, we had, I don't know if we had many at bats against each other. I, 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 we never played together, but I know, I know we opposed each other a couple times, but I don't know if I have any good hit there. Yeah, that's a great, Base knock for Kataris, guy who was the offensive MVP in the first MLB PAA game. And he will be immediately pitch run for by DMAC. I mean, like I said, 
that's a good, oh, that's DMAC. That's not, that's not the same, that's not the Flash. No, this is, because the Flash can only pinch run one time each round through oh, the order. Oh, okay, all right. And he's done it three times. This is the third trip through the order. So instead, but you can re-enter okay. in Badam also. Because DMAC was pinch hit four, he can now take the spot of Kataris. It's a great piece of hitting. One man aboard for Danny Hosley. <laughs> who is two for two on the night. A three-run homer and an RBI single. He scored twice. And also has a stolen base to his ledger. Good evening at the ballpark here, less than five innings in. And what's more is, again, you're only halfway through the ball game, and he has already set a record in this ball game. Most RBIs in a single game by a banana with four. Dang. Really hard to compile them when you walk off so many innings as the home team. Right, right, right. Now they get a chance to be the away squad for the seventh time on the tour. And they're taking advantage of it early. Gillespie tries to quick pitch Hosley. I'm gonna foul it off. Still a full count. DMAC over at first base, may not look at a sneaky runner, six for six into stolen base attempts on the tour. Jason Swan playing with his pocket. <laughs> there goes McFadden. This one popped right side, Swanee in pursuit. And he'll have room to make the play. With you, with the fan who caught the foul ball. Yes, 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 yes. I thought we were going to get the name of the fan who caught the I know, he's ball. got the right color shirt on and everything. I think that was like planted. This ball is lifted out to right center and Jake Skull will grab it. Ryan Cox retired. Great two innings of work so far for Drew Gillespie. Brett Tomko, thank you so much. I appreciate here. you guys. Thanks for inviting me up. Always Brett. good seeing you guys. We'll do it again. Yeah, for tonight. sure. As we say goodbye to Brett, let's take a trip back in time. BTV on this day, part one. Well, right now it's a green screen and there's nothing. Oh, there's a dinosaur. Oh, my God. Um, okay. Let's spread it out a little bit I more. I see a PayPal ad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, if we look over here, it, it, it's 88 degrees. It feels like 93. That's going to be uh, contributed to the to the humidity here in Savannah, Georgia. It's thick. Uh, um, and if it does, oh, my God. Well, oh, that <laughs> actually scares me. <laughs> I don't oh like that God. at all. We're underwater. Oh, what is this? Is this bacon being grilled? Oh, my God, yeah. Wow. That's how hot it is tonight. We're going to fry some bacon. Wow, I can't get my arm out. <laughs> I still can't hear him, so I'm not sure if we have him mic'd up, but... Oh, now I hear him. What magic. Josh, how are you doing down there, buddy? I'm good, Vito. <laughs> Dancing, buddy. Yeah, you are. Look at really, you go. Really using those hips, Josh. I like what I'm seeing up here. Oh, look at He pointed right yeah. to us. Josh wants some more. Get him going. <laughs> Get him going, Josh. Bigger. Bigger, Josh. Talk about a doozy of a broadcast right there, and that is just half of the This Day in BTV history that occurred. 365 days ago, July 22nd, 2022. It's always nice to see uh, my old days in the yellow. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think that guy did a pretty good player dance. As a completely unbiased observer, I think he slayed it. Joe Lytle lifts this one to left. Michael Vitamin Deeb underneath. They can't see it. Lost it in the twilight. And that's going to be the second most bizarre double we have seen here on the night. Yeah, you thought Michael Deeb might be deking out for some reason, and then you realize Joe Lytle's leading off the inning. There are no guys on base. An unfortunate scenario there for Michael Deeb, losing it here in the lights of Lonemark Field. Saw that happen in 
college baseball playoffs. That's how Stanford made it to the College World Series. I believe it was Texas. Outfielder lost it in the twilight. Very similar time of day as it is right now. Now, Jason Swan with a 2-0 count as Jared Donaldson pauses to tie his cleat. Party Animals just need one run here in the fifth to tie this game at two points each. Even though the Bananas have scored eight runs and the Party Animals only two thus far, but that is Banana Ball. Lytle leads off second, the potential inning winning run. Jason Swan tried to send that thing over the San Gabriel Mountains. Yeah, he's trying to join that club of party animals that really enjoy swinging on those 3-0 counts with the Bananas outfield starting to crash in for a possible sprint defense. Swanee wanted to lift that one out to deep center or left field and bring in a run, but he's going to do it regardless here as there's a ball for sprint issued from Jared Donaldson. Jason Swan gets his first walk off of the tour, and we are tied at two points each with five innings in the books. Let's see what Joe Lytle and company have for us on the dish. Okay, a little wavy in the hands, a little pump in the arms. Oh, they're speeding up. They're really getting after it. They're jumping all over the place. Great dance from the party animals. We'll be back with Cowboy Kyle Lewis after we take another trip into BTV history. July 22nd, a year ago. As we turn it down to Josh Tulevsky, who is the world's first side-lying reporter. That's right, Biko. We are all about making history here in BTV, and I think I've done it. I'm the world's first side-lying reporter. But what's more is I'm joined with a very special guest. I'm here with Joshua Juicebox Lanham, and, and Juice, tell me, uh, what has your experience been like in Banana Land so far? Man, you know, it's all about the game of baseball being fun. You know, that's why we started playing it, because it's fun. And I, I feel like Banana Land brings that back straight to the people, because the people will make the game, I feel like. So really, they just got to stop playing with them. Pick up the tempo. And the first one said to the second one, man, I hope you're having fun. Oh, it paused. That's on me. Here we go. Fun, fun. band of the run. Can you be so bold? How did you know that golden rule? I think of all... Oh, we'll pause. Get back into it. I think of all the education that I missed. But then my whole work was never quite like this. Oh, got it bad, got it... Oh, we'll pause action. Here we bad, go. Got it bad. Yeah, you do. We're oh, back I into got it. it bad. Yeah, you do. Um, in my defense, it's a faulty drum set. It's a faulty drum set, guys. Uh, Cowboy Kyle Lewis has joined us. Do you remember that day in BTV history? Um, not off the top of my head. Still I saw that it was game 46. Yeah. Um, that's pretty interesting. A lot of pauses. A lot of very intense singing from you. That was really good stuff. I wish that I could have been slapping that bass up there with you boys, but I'm not sure what I was yeah. doing. Here, we're just, we're like pushing off the screen here. We gotta do one here, big shift is, is close. over here. We've got a whole oh, background to oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. It's fantastic. We've got uh, Noah Bridges down here doing some TikToks, it seems. That is fascinating. A man has disrobed. Yeah. Uh, that was, well, oh, 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 and he went to a full split. I didn't, I, I knew I we needed just, to get the oh. camera off our mugs because something magical was about to wow. happen down there. I felt it in my bones. I mean, that's a lot of, I mean, it's a whole lot of man coming down <laughs> into a split there. It's impressive stuff. Ball game tied two to two. How are you boys doing up here? How are you guys living? Absolutely immaculate, Kyle. Immaculate. Josh. I'm, I'm doing pretty all right. Pretty all right. Yes. All right. You are the prologue to Brett Tomko, so big shoes to fill. Yeah, I actually um, passed him coming out of the elevator while I was getting into the elevator. That was pretty funny. Um, good to see him back with us. I know his kids loved it when we were out at Steinbrenner Field in uh, Tampa Bay when we took on the Players Association League, but um, good to see him back out with us. <laughs> I got a text from Joe Lionel with some choice words about the call not being overturned earlier at first base. And to Joe's uh, 
He doesn't know this, but Josh and I both thought he, he was safe. It was our partners in the replay process down on the field who felt it was inconclusive, and I think that was a fair thought as well. Is that a, our, uh, about a whole game, game and a half worth of, of replays in this early one here? Yes. We had three before the third inning was done. That's good stuff. Here is... That's why they pay you the big bucks. Correct. It's great after only having one last night, which we did get right, by the way, Kyle. You did. Correct. We had talks about that. There was a lot of question and concerns um, in the dugout pre-rehearsal today, but I was the voice of reason. And I said I saw it firsthand in the booth. It was foul. Yes. And I thought it was fair. Correct. That's and how they get you. We had a shot from Zach Bro that truly, truly proved that we made the correct decision. That's all we want to do is get the call right. Whether it's yellow or it's pink, we just want to get the call right. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of bravery on our part to do this. It does. So it shot back up the middle, past the dive of Chase Acuff. And your partner in crime for the better part of the past seven years, Bill Leroy, two for three. Yeah, how about the Nanners? I don't know if it's the visiting team energy or what it could be, but the boys came out swinging today. Oh, we got a special treat here. A treat indeed. How about Kenshi Sagia? 12 years in the Nippon Professional League, the top baseball league in Japan, probably the second best baseball league in the world, only behind MLB. Just absolutely slaying. What does the Fox say coming up to the dish? I mean, what a tune. Twenty sixteen Japan Series champion. Now we're waiting for an offering. Well, Drew Gillespie will <laughs> just gyrate those hips over and over again. <laughs> we got Swanee and Bloomer trading spots across the diamond. Some dinosaur-esque moves. Shades a church clap, and he goes sidearm to fire a ball outside. Bloomer and Swan going back to the positions they're supposed to be playing. That one back up the middle. Acuff will bounce it. Baber jump throw high. And it's going to be a fielder's choice. An exciting one at that. What a trick play by Chase Acuff. 26th for him on the tour. Yeah, just a little bit, bit about Kinchi. Um, we don't speak the same language, but he is quickly one of my favorite banana ball players I've ever had the pleasure of sharing the field with. He was an absolute treat in rehearsal. In the locker room, he was sharing Japanese chocolates, which were immaculate so good and he was commenting on all of our rehearsal dances and saying that they were just too easy for him <laughs> wow sounds like this guy needs to start doing some more choreography lessons around here huh i mean we teaching you guys we ripped copperhead road and it was like he had been going to saddlebags for 15 years <laughs> it was incredible he learned it in i don't even know if he was doing it all night at the hotel last night or something first take had it flawless the Meadows now with a 2-1 count. Sounds like Kenshi picked up some lingo from his time with the Brisbane Bandits in the Australian Baseball League. That's what all the Aussies were saying. Too easy, mate. This one chopped to third. Bloomer gets the... No, he doesn't. Dustin Bayer was thinking about firing it to first. And comes up empty. Sagaya will head on over to third. And now runners on the corners with just one out thanks to the E4. Yeah, bring me some of his uh, his stats, if you don't mind. I don't know a whole lot about him, and I'm sure that the viewers at home would love to find out. Well, Kenshi is 32 years old, out of Tokyo, Japan, and just finished up his Japanese professional baseball career last year. So he was playing at the top level in Japan as of 2022. That finished up 12 years in the Nippon League as this went through the right side. Michael Vitamin D, three for four. Kenshi scores, D.R. Meadows to third. And the Nanners left fielder grabs his 36th stake on the tour. No, oh, we're gonna fox it out. <laughs> As he entered, Kenshi will depart. 
very exciting debut in Banana Land for Kenshi Sagia. Everybody needs to do that dance with him at least once in their life. It's truly life-changing. I saw you guys. I don't think I've ever seen bigger smiles on a lot of you than when he was teaching you the dance. This is a fly ball to right from Josh Reddick. Who else? That will be a sack fly. Diarmeno's coming in to score the second run of the inning. That was a fun sentence. <laughs> so yeah, I think we ran in rehearsal about five or six times. I think we got it flawless on the first attempt with him. And then we just ran it like four more times because we were having so much, more, so much fun with it. Now Deep stands alone at first. Two down and Dan Oberst takes the big bender on the outside corner for strike one. This one corked over to Swan, who lays out. Now he grabs his counterpart with a tag. And Danny Obers, two for four on the day. Party Animals will need two runs to tie the inning, three runs to win it. As we honor all the military members, both past and present, here in the epicenter. We pass that along to everybody watching at home tonight on YouTube here on a beautiful Saturday evening as we come to you live from Rancho Cucamonga, California, about an hour outside of Los Angeles. And if anybody at home is wondering how to spell epicenter, that is E-P-I-C-E-N-T-E-R, epicenter. And how about a happy birthday to Rento Pento Cookie? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And while it's shout out o'clock, shout out Loretta from New York City, who recognized me outside of the Lincoln, actually it was the Met Opera House, right across from the Lincoln Center, after I watched a ballet earlier this month. Oh, where at? I don't know where those. It's North Manhattan. Oh, okay, got it. That's yeah. why I don't know it. It makes a lot of sense. Up there by Pace. Still don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll laugh and I'll nod. They tried to lure me with a $12,000 scholarship coming out of high school. I didn't even apply for it. I'd try and get you to my school, too, if I, if I owned a school. I've heard it's a great college, actually, but couldn't pull me from Syracuse. Come on now. Hughes boy through and through. Now, I have, a, I have a question for you, Josh. <laughs> Shoot, Kyle. Through six innings, how many hits do the Bananas have? And is it, is it, a, is it a tour high for hits in a game? It's 16, and yes, it is. Nice. Felt good about it. I was sitting down there, and guys, guys were just popping barrels left and right. It was insane. Which, Kyle, this leads me to a great point. Mm -hmm. The Bananas, 16 hits as a team tonight. And between the bananas and the party animals, we needed 12 hits to get to 1,000 on the tour. And the bananas alone have done that tonight. 1,000 hits on this year's 2023 World Tour. Big accomplishment for both of these squads. Good for the boys in yellow carrying their weight this evening. I've probably given up 300 of those hits, I feel like. <laughs> so I'm also doing my part. Bottom of the order here for the party animals, trying to feed the top, Dustin Baber. Leading it off, and then Reese Hampton and Dalton Cornette do to swing it. Kyle, you've only given up 135 of them. Thank you for that hug, Josh. 135 isn't that bad in 120 innings, I feel like. No. I feel pretty good about that. Facing the same guys over and over again. I'm starting to figure them out, though, I feel like. Your past two months have been great. Thank you. Dustin Baber playing with fate here. It is not caught by fans. Party Animal fans came out to play tonight. Whether they knew they were Party Animal fans or not, those guys are they're hauling them in out there in the stands. Second rap Scallion was wearing pink. Feels like he knew what he was doing. Kenshi tries to make a sliding stop. It's going to be an E4. Going 93 miles per hour off the bat. Not the easiest play in the world. And Dustin Baber 0 for 2. But aboard, and now Reese Hampton with his team high nine homers represents the inning tying run. Jacob 
Kenshi Sagia is indeed the first NPB player to play for the Bananas. I'm going to say he won't be the last. Ball scorched foul, not caught by fans. And Justin Quinn will come on out to pitch run for Dustin Baber. Fouled straight back. Couple great hacks from Reese. Nothing to show for it yet. Quinn was eight for eight in his stolen base attempts this past spring at Oral Roberts. It was in 47 games played, so not a huge percentage as far as how often he was running, but he was not caught. A great job, a two strike hitting Reese Hampton to right center. Diarmeadow's full extension. He caught it. Firing it back to first, double play! Oh, the doctor with a stupendous full extension grab. He'll get two outs for the price of one. Oh my gosh, the most incredible defensive double play that we have seen all season. It's the doctor going full extension to Rob Reese Hampton, arguably our tour's best hitter. And a bullet back to first base, Dan Overs holding the back for the double play. Wow! What do you have, Kyle? I don't, I'm not sure if that's a deer or if that's DR running. I didn't think he had a shot in the world at that ball. That's the what? only reason I think that he got to that ball is because Bob Dominion is in the house. <laughs> they, it can't be a conclusion. I didn't think there was a chance in the universe he could catch no that. No shot. It wasn't hit hard. It wasn't hit that high. I mean, he got a great jump on it, but goodness gracious, full extension. And to get up after crashing into the ground and throwing a dot one hop to Dan to hold the bag. They just don't make them like the boy out of Idalia anymore. It's a great time to remind everybody that for the majority of his five years of college baseball, he never played in the outfield. In fact, the only time he really did was his freshman year at Juco. Every time I played him in college at Columbus State, he played third base, and he played a immaculate third base. And last summer for the Nanners, he was primarily at second, played some short and third as well. And starting in the summer series, all of a sudden, he was out in center field, back flipping and making incredible diving plays like the one you just saw. Speaking of uh, CPL, I saw our former backstop from last year. Taylor Justice was in the building last night. Yes. It was good to see him. Warm the heart. Josh, unfortunately, was in statistics land, so he didn't make it out to the party plaza and missed the 2022 Coastal Plain League champion. It's, yeah, it's pretty disappointing considering I, I took him seventh overall in my 2022 CPL Bananas life skills draft. I don't think that'll be your last opportunity to see him. In the short exchange I had with him, I asked him how he was doing, and he said he was ready to be out here with us. So I think you'll see him a lot sooner than you think. I got the same message. <laughs> we are ready with open arms wherever you are, Taylor. DC three, two for two, adds a sprint to the box score tonight. Now Jake Skull, the first and fourth strikeout victim of the night for Jared Donaldson. Sends that a mile high to left. Michael D breaks back and now comes in a few steps. And that is out number three. The Bananas jump back out in front, win the inning two runs to nothing, take a three to two lead in the all important points category with three innings left here on the docket and just over 28 minutes on the clock. It is time to give away a pair of hokas. Hold it. Hold it. All right, let's run. Okay, so you have to go into the comments section or into the description of the video, click the link, you will fill out all your contact information, and then the buzzword, which is drum roll, men. <laughs> Cucamonga. Oh, goodness gracious. Ah, oh, it's there for you. <laughs> Don't look, though. Try it. Um, C U C A M 
O N G A, Cucamonga. Nailed it. I saw it on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> you are one sly son of a gun. That's right. You have to spell it right. And um, I wanted people at home. I didn't want to confuse you guys. So, Good once again, in fourth grade, I did spell Miss Choc. I misspelled chocolate. Um, definitely is the one in my adult life time that really just gives me an issue every time I try and spell it. Definitely. Yeah, it's hard for me. It starts why. with the E, and then it's all eyes after that. No. If it's, if it's any consolation, I lost my fourth grade spelling bee by misspelling environment. That's just environment. That's yeah. just that's just embarrassing. How was I Josh. supposed to know that? You're thinking in mint, ten year old boy. Yeah. Josh, that's embarrassing, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Luckily, I've never had the pleasure of being in a spelling bee, so I don't have any fails to mention. I think you'd be pretty good at it. Yeah. Maybe we should we should definitely do a spelling bee in the booth. For somebody who I like where your head is at. Yeah. That's yeah. actually a genius idea, Kyle. It's put that in our back pocket for somebody who writes a story just about every week i'm pretty bad at spelling that's what autocorrect is for took the words right out of my mouth how many i'm, I'm asking this as a serious question yes in this buzz using this buzzword how many hokas are we giving away tonight this is a serious question i am not trying to make anybody say anything one pair of hokas. <laughs> I was ser that was seriously wondering. Can't go higher register if it's only one pair. Yeah, and that's so fair. I'm, I'm not legally allowed to. And by correct. contract. Right. And Cucamonga, the buzzword, will Thank give you a chance at that one shot for hokas this evening. There Jones Jr. strikes out looking. He's two for four. Now Dakota McFadden, one for two. The pair of them have both fouled out to a fan tonight. And Drew Gillespie. In his fourth inning of work, picks up his first two Ks. Here's Jesse Cole. The world's tallest hitter. Please welcome Dakota Stilts Albrenin. Perfect man to pinch it here with no one aboard and two down as we have a young rivalry brewing between him and Drew Gillespie. This is their third time facing off. Yeah, and Drew, welcome to Banana Ball in a rather rough way in Indianapolis when it was Dakota Albritton who took him up the middle for a single that walked <laughs> up the inning. And what is going on here, Drew Gillespie? You're going to hit stilts? The people here in Rancho do not like it. I've never seen more phones videotaping at one time, and they were certainly hoping for more than a one-pitch at bat. But they'll keep him out because he's going to run the bases. Well, yes, this is the fourth time through the order, so Malachi Mitchell could be pinch running here, but I think Bananas want a little more run from just the amazing image that is Dakota Stilts Albert in on a baseball field. <laughs> so nice, gets it announced <laughs> twice. But, I mean, if you think about it, it's less steps, you know? <laughs> I think three of the 5,000 people at the ballpark cheered for Dakota that time. Connor. I think if he gets the second, we should do it again. <laughs> and then third, and then if he, whenever he undoubtedly scores, we should do it again. I'm just all time befuddled by everything that's happening here. Ryan Cox, 0 for 3. He's flown out twice to right, once to center. He's put some really good swings on the balls. I know that uh, BP in the cage today, he got a chance to hit with uh, George Contreras in the cage and really liked the, uh, the knowledge that he shared with him and, and seemed to like his swing a lot after that cage session. Another one, two coming here from Gillespie. That one bounces off the glove of Dalton Cornett, and that is certainly a downside of having Dakota Stilts all Britain running the bases as he could not advance to second there. Yeah, he took a slight step towards the second base bag and then decided uh, it might be better not to do that. <laughs> Coxie. Left side. Bryson Bloomer runs out of room and the fans not able to make a play. Buzzword reminder, it is Cucamonga. 
You can Google it if you need some help on spelling. Rice and Bloomer across the diamond. And still it's just barely able to make it to second. Randy Voss says he was safe. Bananas end, or the party animals and the fans have both expended their challenge today since the party animals had a challenge that was not overturned. And now two men on for Bill Leroy. Official scoring on that one, Josh. I think that's an E5. Kyle Lewis agrees. <laughs> Consensus here in the booth. I mean, he pulled him off the bag. He did pull him off the bag. I think if Ryan Cox was running harder all the way through, he possibly could have just beat the wrap there. But that wasn't a foul ball. Still, Ted eyes for third base. I would love for Bill to spray one out in the gap and see see Stilts come around to score here. And his backstop, two for three on the night. Now behind, no balls and two strikes. You can't rule out the possibility here. Two of Bill's hits here in the month of July have been doubles into the gaps. We could very well see that here against Drew Gillespie. Mr. Leroy has six two baggers on the tour. See what Gillespie goes to here. Four seam, two seam, cut fastball. Might be a changeup or curveball. He could go over the top. Three quarters or sidearm. He goes three quarters. Just misses the outside corner. Dalton Cornett. Thought that should have ended the inning. It was a ball according to Trackman. Good call by Vincent Chapman. Big 2-2 two -two coming here. Dakota still Albright in off second, Cox off first, and the count runs full on Bill Leroy. Oh, a sprint could be interesting here. It'd be could be real interesting. I mean, you got to send him off a of second base here. Well, we will not get to See what would have happened there. How about Drew Gillespie? He plunks stilts and is able to pick up his defense after an error. Brings another man aboard. He picks up three strikeouts in the frame. Using the fastball as the final weapon. And how about this entrance from DJ the Invader? That's not DJ, that's Gru. <laughs> Being escorted out to the mound by Minions. And boy, that little guy still holding his note here. Great performance by them. Bananas lead three points to two. DJ will have to keep the party animals off the board here in the bottom of the seventh to preserve that lead. See what he's done across the tour. Started hot, had some rough times in the middle of the tour, but boy, he's been picking it up again. Yeah, the Bananas, they like putting him back in this setup role, and he's been doing very well. Just looking at the MPIs, he has dropped from what was once above a four minute average MPI to now three minutes and 53 seconds. He is the leader of all qualified bananas on tour and looking to drop it even further. And you talk about just the June numbers for him, his average MPI in June, under two minutes. Mind boggling. Those four seam and two seam fastballs, a cutter as well. A slider and his best pitch, the changeup. Looks like we've got a big moment on the mound here. A little photo op with the minions makes sense. Oh no, we got a whole scene going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they stole the moon. Oh, they stole the moon. Thank Come you, on, Kyle. guys. It's despicable me. I haven't seen that in a few years. Fun fact, I was scrolling through the cable TV in our hotel today. Yes. And it was on TV, so I watched it. And I watched them steal the moon. With the girls. <laughs> mm -hmm. Give me back the girls. Looks like the moon's fine. It's up in the sky. I guess they put it back, though. That was the whole point. They of did. Yeah, they did get it back. They got it back from Vector. Vector. Mm -hmm. Talk about a rapscallion. Yeah. Great villain. Really under 
Underappreciated villain. I was track saying. suits are awesome. Uh, insane. That one back up the middle. Bryson Bloomer picks up his second hit of the ball game. So if we could have just left Bob and Kevin out there for the first batter, I think Kevin would have made that play behind the mound. Was that up for debate? If you're asking me, I would have kept him out there. Right. I bet you they're they're really good fielders. Pandemonium here in Banana Land. Now Tanner Thomas coming up lip syncing. This is the Kentrins. So back to back evenings here within an hour of Las Vegas. We have some Barbie themed walk ups to the plate. I guess I've, I, I mean, with all the Barbie stuff we're doing, I got to see that movie. Didn't it just come out yesterday? Two days ago, Two I days believe. Ago? You want to go see it together, Kyle? We could do that. It depends on where, if we're on good terms or not. Well, in my eyes, we certainly are right now. Yeah, if we, I mean, if we had to go see it, like if we watched it after the game tonight, we could definitely go see it. But you, wanna, you never, you never you know what. Want to watch it after the game? Tonight? No, because we have an early day game tomorrow, and I have to pitch, and I'm going to throw a complete game. This one bounced to short. Ryan Cox under the leg, throws to first, double play. His 98th trick play on the tour. And there are two down here in the bottom of the seventh. Ryan Cox just has not had many ground balls hit to him tonight. And when he finally gets one, he's going between the legs, steps on the bag, and what a strong throw over to first. A big out, or big two outs for DJ the Invader, actually, as this game still without a run scored. Now the party animals, they're going to need a solo shot or some more runners on base to try and walk off this inning. It'll be up to Garrett Delano to make it happen. Residing over the six hole tonight, the extra hitter has struck out and grounded out. Quickly behind 0 and 2. And now a 1 2 count on the kid out of Callahan, Florida. 2018 Collegiate Banana, teammate of Cowboy Kyle Lewis. And not as a pitcher, just a hitter. Fascinating. Cut and a miss. DJ after the leadoff single, thanks to the double play and a strikeout, faces the minimum and holds serve. One point lead still for the Nanners with two innings to go and less than 15 minutes on the clock. And as I bid you adieu, Zach Phillips is on the mound doing quite possibly my favorite promo, promo of all time. It is one more time. Real quickly, before you leave us, quick food review, Kyle? Is this, what is it, is it chocolate? I don't know. It's oh my God, if it's chocolate, you guys are in for a treat. It's an undescript box that says Tokyo Banana on it and has some Japanese writing. It, I mean, this is, the wrapping on it is pristine. Yeah, yeah I thought it was a book when you pulled it out. A little light reading oh, here. Oh, man, I hope it's chocolate. Let's see. I kind of want to save this. You know, yeah, kind of a save should. the paper yeah. kind of guy. Are you with, like, Christmas presents and stuff? Yeah, I yeah. am. Really? Yeah. You could probably go if you're careful. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. yeah, be careful, boys. Don't get too crazy now. We're almost there. I oh, think you be can careful. finesse it's it out like this now. Okay. Come now. Come, baby. Here we go. No, I'm just going to have to get a little grizzly. Uh, I know. I really wanted to see. What I mean, it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Yeah, My fiance makes fun of me relentlessly for wanting to see. I think she kind of checks out for you. Look at this box. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. This that's, is incredible. That's salvageable. I think I know what it says on Come the front. On. It says Tokyo Ooh. Banana is the flavor loved by people of all ages. Whoa. Made with the hope of becoming a war memory, not just of Tokyo, but of Japan. Now this wow. looks like their version of a Japanese Thank Twinkie, because it looks like it has a filling on the inside, and if I had to guess, <laughs> it's going to taste like bananas. I think Just so too. alone from the descriptive picture we got. And speaking of, Kenshi is actually gonna leave this Wow, in how about that? Can you boys get in there? Kenshi Sugiya, 0 for 1 on the night, did come around to score a run. Oh! Oh, you already got in there. Yeah, that'll make you want a oh, fox dance. Oh, oh, this is incredible. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Exactly what I thought, but like better. Wow. Mm. If bananas tasted like this, I would eat it oh. every single day of my life. Mm -hmm. Break it down, Josh. Get crazy. Lose yourself in the song. 
lose yourself in the song. What the fuck did? What did the fox say? Oh, it's it's you 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 go like this, mm. and then the next thing you do the little Egyptian kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's one of the tastiest things I've had in my entire life. Oh. It is a ten out of ten. That gave me shivers. Great packaging, great. I mean, it looks good. You know it's going to taste good. You guys think that was good? Yeah. I give this an 8.7, and I give the chocolate a 10. Oh, okay. You guys got to get on it. It's like the Ghirardelli squares, but Japanese. He switched over to hitting from the right side here and continues the battle. Still a 2-2 count against Zach Blankenship. New arm for the party animals. Aren't you happy you stayed around for an extra second or two here, Kyle? Kind of worried about my figure for ring dudes now, but... The other foul ball from Kenshi. I had no idea he was a switch hitter. All I can think about is this banana treat. Slaps that one. Dustin Baber attacking, able to make the play. Okay. And Kenshi now 0 for 2 on the night. I finished my banana. Give me one more out, and I'll get out of your guys' hair. Sounds good, big dog. Wow. A look Mm. at the slick play from Baber. And to the top of the order we go, DR Meadows. You guys talk about baseball. I'm going to keep talking about that dessert. I'm thinking a little crazy here, and it's in my head. A banana split dessert, you know, with the Sundays. You I like toss, it. You toss one or those, one or two of those bad boys in there. 360, beautiful bounce throw over to first from Dustin Baber. His 53rd trick play in 57 attempts. Second most on the tour by a long shot. And they are now two for four on the night. Couple singles, couple runs scored, a steal of first base. And Michael D will swing away. Looking on. My scorebook says four for four, but I don't think that's right. I remember him grounding out. What does your scorebook say, Josh? I have Michael Deeb, three for four tonight with the fielder's choice. Exactly. Now, four for five? Correct. What a ball game either way. That's right. It was his third at bat in which he hit a ground ball 101 miles an hour to short for fielder's choice. So still, I mean, just, just a good day all around, you know? Four hits in five at-bats is nothing to complain about. He cut and a miss from Josh Reddick. 0 for 3 on the night with a sack fly his last time. Went 1 for 3 with a home run in his Bananas debut this past August. Loops that one into center. Reese Hampton in pursuit and will make a run and catch. Zach Blankenship gives up the two-out single, but no damage done. And for the second straight inning, the party animals just need a run to tie this game at three points apiece. Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, thank you so much for joining us again, and good luck on the morrow in your start against these pesky party animals. I appreciate that. That'll be a 1 o'clock start. The boys are going to have a little day party out here to end our stop here in Rancho Cucamongo, which is also the buzzword C-U-C-A-M-O-N-G-A. I cannot wait to go to to Japan, which we hopefully will be doing sometime soon because both the food items I've had from there have been immaculate. Um, Can't wait to hang out with you guys after the game. Thank you so much, Kyle. (laughs) What happened, Josh? Kyle just gave me a, a very big squeeze on that hug. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> a little sting to that hug, huh? You could say that. Really cool sight here. It's the 62nd game 
on the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our good friends over at Zappos. We're in Rancho Cucamonga, California, the 21st stop of the tour. And boy, all the way, it has been a beautiful time. Jesse Cole, what do you think about everybody who's helped us out along this tour? We love you so much, Banana Nation. Now let's go, Bananas! Could have said it any better myself. From the broadcast booth to the mound, Brett Tomko making his Savannah Bananas debut. The Southern California kid, at least from the age of three on. The 14 year MLB career, as you can see, 100 wins. 2009 World Series champion for his time spent with the Yankees. And a guy who gave up a run in his banana ball debut, which was for the MLB PAA pitching against the Nanners in George M. Steinbrenner Field at the end of April. Looking to try and shut down the party animals here. Yeah, and you kind of feel like he's got a feel for the sport of banana ball now. He's going to try and do what he talked to us about up in the booth, paint some corners and try and use a pitch mix, primarily a fastball, a cutter, and some variation of a breaking ball. Quick 2-0 count on Chase Hickup. He told us in the booth. 1-1, rather. Scoreboard's wrong. This one chopped to the left side. Really tough play. Eric Jones, Jr., Ended up shielding Ryan Cox from his view of the ball. And it's going to be an infield single plus an E6 and a double. <laughs> I wish I could tell you, pal. I'm going to give Chase Dickoff a double, a bizarre one at that. We've seen the three weirdest doubles on the entire tour. Two of them were grounders. One of them was a can of corn to left. Aka for his troubles is now two for three. He walked off the fourth inning, which was his first walk off on the tour. Joe Lytle, a donut hitter, taps this one through the right side. Acuff being waved around. Throw from Josh Reddick is not quite in time. And just like that, the party animals tie the game at three points apiece. And here comes the young professor. Well, first, the party animals will squat and twerk in celebration. Joletto gets his second walk off on the tour. Here is the young professor. We are heading to the top of the ninth inning, which means it's time to cast your gaze upon the scoreboard. It is a tie game heading into the ninth. Three for the party animals, three for the Savannah Bananas. But here's the thing about the final inning in the game of Banana Ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point, which means literally anything can happen here. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet and make some noise because this is the final inning! And now let's meet the ring dudes for tonight. First on the Party Animals dugout number 27, Jake Lee Alio. And on your Savannah Bananas dugout, number 12, Cowboy Kyle Louise. Banana Land, we need your energy. So let's make some noise and get those fists pumping in the air, baby. Let's go. Zach Blankenship out for his second inning of work. Granted a two-out single by Michael Deeb in the top of the eighth. And now we'll have four, five, and six. Danny Oberst, Eric Jones Jr., and Dakota McFadden. The meat of this powerful bananas order. 
Yeah, it's interesting. The party animals are going to stick with Black Zach Blankenship, but the numbers have been fantastic for him. You see three strikeouts to one ball four sprint on the tour. The real challenge, he is going up against the three most powerful right-handed batters in the Bananas lineup. Of course, Blankenship on the mound, one of their two lefties. Which with a fastball in the high 80s, low 90s. It's a two-seam sinker. Very heavy pitch. Tough to get good wood on, unless you're Dan Oberst, who serves it into center field for his third hit of the night in five chances. And he's four for five in quality at bats. One of the two outs he made was a scorching 106 mile an hour line out. As dangerous a guy as you can find on the bags. He's already swiped one base tonight for his 32nd steal on the tour. There's the curve ball from Blankenship. Also works in a changeup as well. And a splitter from time to time. Two count on Eric Jones Jr. Two for four on the night. Two runs batted in, a single and a double. He's fouled out to a fan and struck out looking. There goes Dan Oberst, throw from Dalton Cornett. On the money, but a hair late. And second steal of the night, 33rd on the tour in 37 attempts. And you've seen Dan dancing on the base pass all night long for the Bananas. And how about this? That stolen base, even more critical considering Blankenship has fallen behind EJ 3-0. He is one bad one away from Dan Obers coming around to score. And that's a wise take from EJ. The count now running at 3-1. and one. The tour leader in home runs certainly loved the look of the 3-0 heater right down the middle, but he's still in the driver's seat in this at-bat. And now we'll get the sprint. That drives in his third run of the night. And Jones is going to motor into second, the seventh party animal behind Blankenship to grab it is Jake Skull. And the Bananas lead four points to three. EJ immediately pinch run four by Malachi Mitchell. It is Eric Jones Jr.'s 40th RBI on the tour that ties Jake Skull, Bryson Bloomer, and Tanner Thomas for the season high. And it's quite impressive that EJ has now reached that mark, come into a tie with them, especially considering fewer at-bats the Bananas get because they are the home team. Now, the only consolation you can still say, the Bananas getting to play more games this season against the Challengers. O2 gets the outside corner. Low and away, Dakota McFadden, not at all a fan of the call from Vincent Chapman. Trackman also did have it off the plate in DMAX defense. And it's a huge K for Blankenship, not just because it's an enormous first out of the situation, or first out of the inning, rather. That was his Birmingham Bloomfield Beaver teammate from a summer ago. They were both champions of the USPBL. And Hosley takes the back foot curveball literally off the back foot. He is plunked for the sixth time on the tour. Ties Bill Leroy for the team high. And what's interesting about that plate appearance from Danny Hosley is the fact that he was actually sent up to the plate. Usually late game, you see the bananas. Go ahead and put a pinch hitter in and Dan Danny's spot in the order because they want him to come in. But with Danny working two innings last night and two rounds of showdowns, it will be somebody else getting the ball in the night for the Bananas. And from the looks of it out in the bullpen, it could be either Matt Malatesta or Connor Higgins. Hot fly, not caught by the fans. Ryan Cox 0 for 4, three flyouts, reached on an error his last time. to be invited to the hit parade. Malachi Mitchell trying to time up Lincolnship. This one out of the stadium. 0-2 count on the banana shortstop. It's a 90 mile an hour fastball. And 
the front door bender never gets to the front door. Two straight hit batters. And Coxie is going to hopscotch his way. 90 feet. Well, at least about half of the 90 feet from home plate to first base. That's the second time he's been plunked by a pitch on the tour. Malachi Mitchell pushed to third. Danny Hosley up to second. Coxie now resides at first base. And what a big spot for Bill Leroy. The banana's ahead by a point. And with one out here in the top of the ninth inning, their catcher, two for four on the night, could blow this thing open. He's ahead 1-0. and out. And you're in this situation where all of these runs are counting for points in the ball game. So Bill, with an excellent chance to, as you say, open up this game. It's going to be chopped to third. Bloomer to second. One. Baber to first. Double play. Blankenship rolls a 5-4-3 DP when he needed it most. And the Bananas lead by a point. Here's the young professor. One run up on the board at the top of the ninth inning. But now the party animals have an opportunity to strike back. If they tie the game, it will force a showdown tiebreaker. On the other side of that, it's up to the Bananas now to just get three outs to win the whole thing. Make some noise, Rancho, because this is it! All right, Banana Land, if you want some foam balls, I need to hear you up on your feet and make some noise! How about the hold on the noise there from Sharp? Would have thought Messi just scored his first goal in the... It's the soccer league in the United States. The MLS. Thank you. I think it Premier League got him at any anyway, that was anywhere close. Hey, how about this? You don't get to see Matt Malatesta or Connor Higgins. How about Ryan Kellogg? Coming in with the Nick Cap. A resident Canadian, all six feet and six inches of him. Going to come in and try and nail down his first save. And it makes complete sense, actually, that the Bananas want to go to Ryan Kellogg here. If you exclude his stat and look exclusively at the numbers out of the pen, Ryan Kellogg has been fantastic so far. Two innings under two minutes for the Bananas, and he has not been allowing the ball for sprints out of the pen either. So the Bananas know they've got a consistent strike thrower, and that's what you need when you're trying to nail down not only a save and a win, but the chance to go back above 500 for the first time on the tour since opening night in West Palm Beach. It's going to be up to the fifth round draft pick back in 2015 by the Chicago Cubs. Spent seven years in the organization. Last year was playing with Dalton Cornette on the Wild Health Genomes in the Atlantic League. And Kellogg comes in for 9, 10, and 1. Jason Swan, Dustin Baber, and then back at the top of the order, Reese Hampton all due to swing it. Dalton Cornett due up fourth. Swanee is 0 for 1 on the night. Blistered the ball, lined it straight into the mitt of Jared Donaldson. His first time worked a sprint to walk off the fifth inning, his last plate appearance. Peter gets the outside corner. Kellogg throws two seam and four seam fastballs. This one grabbed by Ryan Cox between the legs across the diamond, not in time. Only two trick plays away from 100. You understand why he went for it, but Swanee runs like the wind and is able to beat it out. The potential tying run aboard. Yeah, that was fantastic hustle down the line from Jason Swan on that slow roller. And a great stretch by Dan Oberst nonetheless. But especially in these kind of situations, you are going to see whatever batter comes out of the box running as hard as they can. Dustin Baber down into foul territory. What a catch! Dan Oberst tumbling to the dirt. Gets an enormous first out here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, you saw Dan in hot pursuit of that pop-up off the bat of Dustin Baber. And even though he had to turn around last second, comes up with a terrific snag. That could be the critical play to get the Bananas this win tonight. Justin Quinn pinch runs for Jason Swan at first. 
Third time on the base paths for the Party Animals automatic pinch runner. Into the top of the order we go. The switch hitting center fielder, Reese Hampton, 0 for 2. Lined into a double play to center his last time. That was a ball that was ticketed for at least a single, if not extra bases, before D.R. Meadows went full Superman. And this time, this one's going to find the grass. Pretty close to where he was robbed. A trip to the dish a go. And now an infield single from Swan. And a single dunk down to right center by Reese Hampton. Has the game winning run on first base. And the two wild health genomes from a summer ago in the Atlantic League, Dalton Cornett and Ryan Kellogg face off with the game on the line. Not just teammates, they were also roommates on the road. These guys know each other just about as well as anyone in Banana Land. And Cornett already with multiple hits off of Ryan Kellogg in the limited sample size that he's had against him. This is a big at bat here for Kellogg where he's really got to bear down and think about what his plan of attack is going to be to try and get the party animals catcher. Justin Quinn takes off, diving stop! Oh, between the legs! Ryan Cox over to first! His 99th trick play of the tour wins game two here in California! That is unbelievable for Brian Cox, diving and making that catch, getting up, going between the legs, getting to the back, and Dan Obers knew to get over there and had a strong stretch. It is Ryan Cox with one of the plays of the year to get the Bananas back above 500. They are 23 and 22 against their arch rivals. And look at this, the wherewithal to send that puppy between the legs. Gets DC three by a hair. And it is a four to three victory for the Manners. They've won both games here in Rancho Cucamonga. Here is Bill Leroy to celebrate the victory. Bill Leroy. Up next, we have our wonderful coaches, Coach Adam Byron and Coach Tyler Gillam. Of course, we have our entertainers, fastest man in banana ball, Flash the Kid Mitchell. Our bad trickster, Alex Ziegler. The tallest man in sports, Dakota Stills Aubrey. And last but not least, our dancing first base coach, Macy O. We have our pitchers and reserves. Starting pitcher, Jared Dawson, Cowboy Kyle, Zach, Matt Malatesta, Ryan Kellogg, Nolan Daniel, and DJ the Invader. This man catching a couple barrels tonight, my dear friend, number three, Mr. Eric Jones. Up next, you know him, you love him, call him maybe number nine, Mr. Noah Bridges. Also catching many barrels tonight, coming up with a legend, Reginald Horan, Mr. Danny Obert. Leaving the yard tonight with a home run, number 18, Mr. Danny Hosley. The trick shortstop, living up to his name tonight. Into the game with a double play. Number six, Ryan Cox. The doctor with multiple hits tonight. And many catches in the outfield. Number five, the Meadows. Coming up, singing his own song. <laughs> with my friend, Kenny Sukia, Mr. Dalton Molden. Bringing the flavor to the mound, the Italian Stallion, Vinny Derubiens. Coming up, beating his chest, the man, number 24, Dakota D-Mac McFadden. The barrel man having himself a night. Multiple hits all over the yard. Number seven, Michael D. Last but not least, you love him, 
our social media star and greatest showman, number eight, Jackson Olsen. Time for your Savannah Bananas! <laughs> Bananas Nation, we love you so very much. Thank you so much, Rancho Cucamonga. You are amazing, and the party is just starting. Plaza Party, featuring all your favorite players from the Party Animals and Bananas. Make sure you head on out to the Plaza Party. It starts right now. Banana Station, my name is Shark. We'll see you out at the Plaza Party. We'll see you here again tomorrow. Go Bananas! Well, we have now had two legendary games here in Rancho Cucamonga, California. We will have our third in Lone Mart Field tomorrow afternoon, 1 p.m. start Pacific time. Josh Chalevsky, Biko Scala, thank you so much for spending your Saturday night with us, whether you are here on West Coast time or on the East Coast three hours in the future, anywhere in between outside of the United States. We really appreciate you all. A 4-3 win for the Nanders. They are now 23-22 and 22 on the tour against the Party Animals. First time they've had a winning record against their arch rivals since they were 1-0 back on February 17th after the opening night of this tour. I mean, it is unbelievable. And the Bananas do it as the visiting team, no less, which they are not very used to doing it, but they are now four and two in games in which they are the visiting team. And boy, did they cash in, especially offensively. 17, that's right, count it, 17 hits tonight for the Bananas, a season high for them. Four of them for Michael Deeb. He went four for five on the night. The top of the order, I mean, the stat lines are incredible. You have DR Meadows going two for four with the steal of first base. You have uh, Deeb, of course, four for five right there. You take Josh Reddick out of the equation. He goes 0 for four, does add a sack fly. But back to the regulars, Dan Obers, three for five. Eric Jones Jr., two for four with a two base sprint. Three runs batted in. Dakota McFadden ends up going one for four. Okay, fans robbed him of an AP as well. Also a tough call against him, that's life. Then you get to Danny Hosley, two for two. Check that, two for three on the night with a, th a three run homer, part of a four RBI evening. The first six guys in this lineup obliterated the ball all over the park tonight. And they came out ready to attack Brett Helton, which Helton wants to throw strikes and the Bananas were ready for it. And Helton gave them pitches that they wanted to hit. Yeah. That is a fact. Plus, we had Brett Tomko pitching for the Nanners. We had Josh Reddick playing in right field, pinch inning for Vinny DeRubius, a little surprise in the first inning. And we had Kenshi Sugita with an, a really incredible walk up doing what does the Fox say, as well as scoring a run. And uh, we will see him again tomorrow night in Banana Land. So it's really cool to add the Nippon Baseball League into Banana Ball history as well. This was an absolute doozy. Uh, least, lest I forget, uh, George Kataris also with a pinch hit single tonight. I mean, it, but you have three former Major League Baseball players and a professional ball player who has over a decade of experience from the top league in Japan. I think that's a pretty good night at the ballpark. I mean, just the guess that you had and just the way that the Bananas performed overall offensively. It's fantastic. And tomorrow they turn to Kyle Lewis once again to see if they can sweep Rancho Cucamonga. And as I wagered yesterday, I will again. I think Sean Fluke will probably get the start for the party animals. That's who you've got to go for. Obviously, Rancho is lost. The Bananas own this. But the Nanders get a win tomorrow, and they are just one victory away from taking the great state of California. And boy, oh boy, 
that is a whole lot of people and a whole lot of geography on the west coast of the U.S. So the party animals will be coming back with a vengeance. They now have to take three out of the next four games here in the Golden State to avoid the bananas coloring it yellow. Uh, before we give away a pair of hokas tonight, Josh, we have a very special California-themed musical presentation for everybody watching here. That's right, and we also have some guests uh, in our booth that we would like to introduce. So everybody, uh, this is most of the creative team, to be honest with you. So <laughs> Tara Heater, Sarah Bott, Melissa Beal, Savannah Alanis, Ty Barrett, Henry Campbell's getting in here. I mean, you've got the works going on here. Okay, great. Plus, we have Taylor Finneran, Chris Haynes, Chad Reese from the BTV crew, Henry Campbell with the old uh, wireless cam. We are going to switch from the headsets to our little stand-up mic here, and it's time to get musical. I can't hear anything. Oh, there's oh, karaoke right intro. here. Okay. Oh. Wait, we got it. That was just an intro. Greetings, oh, greetings, loved ones. Let's take a journey. <laughs> I know a place where the grass is really greener. Warm, wet and wild. There must be something in the water.
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, unbelievable work by a good majority of the Bananas and Party Animals creative team here. That was a really, really incredible performance. Dip down on the old Snoop Dogg part there a little bit. Uh, there was certainly uh, probably about 25% of that that we could not air on the, uh, on the broadcast. So it was a good job figuring that all out. Our, our setup here to, is a little worse for wear. It's gotten... It's gotten some damage. Nick Keldy now behind the scenes trying to figure out how to patch it up. I think the dream is, you know what, it, it doesn't matter. We're at the tail end of the show, Josh. Uh, let's switch off of this because it's not even, it's not even gonna reach you, buddy. Okay, that yeah. works. So back to headsets. <laughs> All right, turns out I, I almost lost mine, but I have found it. We're, we're cooking with gas. Clayton Franklin's trying to figure out how to align this thing. Uh, Josh, I think it's time to give away some hokas. Yes, yes it is. Okay. Biko, drum roll please. <laughs> our winner of our pair of hokas, courtesy of Zappos tonight, Brandon Mosteller. Brandon, great to have a familiar face earning some hokas this evening. That is fantastic. Congratulations. The Bananas once again win this 4-3. We will be live tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Well, actually, that'll be first pitch. We will be live uh, a few minutes before then. The exact time will get to you tomorrow. That's uh, above Biko's pay grade. Before we entirely shut this thing down and prepare you for game three in Rancho Cucamongo on the morrow, let's shout out the cast and crew that made this whole thing possible because I know they are rearing to shut this thing down three hours in the future in Savannah. And it all starts there. Our technical director, Griffin Ellis, the man with the plan, Keegan Woods directing once again a superb job calling out all the shots on audio. One name, you know him, you love him. It is Mr. Kwanzi. On the score bug, it's Michael Basista. On the graphics, it is Julia Massey. And on statistics, it is Mikey O'Connor. The same crew, they are getting better and better each and every night. On the replay tonight, Dakota Burns said, absolutely killed it. Challenges galore. Three uh, really early tonight. And then crazy plays, bizarre things happening left and right. Dakota, you are a superstar. On the first base camera here in Rancho, it was Taylor Finnerin. You saw them performing there. And on the third base camera, Emerson Elmgren, the Iron Horse of BTV. What an incredible combo on those cameras. On the high home camera here tonight, golly, I could have sworn it was Chris Haynes. I think this might just be a uh, reprint. Anyway, I thought it was Chris Haynes. Maybe it's Clayton Franklin. That's what my list says. I'm going to disagree with it. I think Clayton might have been on the center field cam. I don't know. I'm just going with my gut and going against what our staffing list says. On the wireless camera, Henry Campbell up here in the booth with us as well, all over the field. Incredible work, Henry. On the drone, Nick Keldy, the drone flying extraordinaire. And our moderators in the chat, Scott Thompson and Colbyte underscore. It takes an army. You are all amazing. Amazing. Scott and Colbyte, thank you so much for being the voice of the bananas in the chat, which is an incredible community in there. Josh Tulevsky on the color commentary and the statistical savant of BTV. I don't think you get enough credit for that, as uh, especially when we play a game at 7 p.m. and then another one at 1 p.m. Your life gets harder than anyone could ever imagine doing a bajillion stats and crunching them for tomorrow's game. A lot that you do is uh, unnoticed behind the scenes. You're incredible, man. Biko, you're too kind. Great work on the play-by-play. -play. Nonetheless, I'm excited for a little Sunday fun day tomorrow. Uh, might be a little polo action from the boys. I can smell it. Okay, that is going to be a blast. Thank you so much to Kyle Lewigs and Brett Tomko for both joining us in the booth. And thank you to the executive producers of BTV, Jesse, Emily, and Carrie Cole, as well as Jared Orton for allowing us and guiding us to do all the fun, absolute nonsense that we do. I will tell you, none of the executive producers knew we were going to sing California Girls tonight. Sometimes we just go off the rails, and that is our right. For Chad Reese, the coordinating producer of BTV and the straw that stirs this beautiful drink, I am Biko Scala, saying so long for now. Nanners win this one 4-3 to three in a thriller coming back ahead in the ninth inning and holding it down. They've won both games here in California and look for a clean sweep in Rancho Cucamonga on the morrow. We will see you there on YouTube, and of course, we'll, we'll see, see you